Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. The NFT shit, um, it's just like any thing else you would hold. So, like, say you own a pair of sneakers, right? Mm-hmm. They're hundred and twenty dollars sneakers. You buy them the first day they come out, right? But then that player passes away three days later, right? God forbid. Or, mm-hmm. or that player hits some major milestone. All of a sudden, on the resale market, that one hundred and twenty dollar pair of shoes. People are going to want the shoes just because of the historical recognition of that moment. And you have collectors yeah. out there that will literally buy them shoes just to have the originals from that year that were made so that later on when they become dead stock and people are retro in them, they got the original. So like you can sell it whenever. So say Tory Lanez goes through this court case or whatever, shit goes great, he's now free, you know that's going to be a huge thing. At that point, his name is going to be so crazy. All of his fans are going to want to have memorabilia and shit from him. That NFT, by being released during that time, is going to be of historical value, sentimental value to them, making the resale market basically fluctuate. So you'll have fans of his that'll be willing to pay anywhere up to $100, $150 for that thing just to say they own one of them originals from that year and nobody else can say they have it. So they'll buy it off you, you spent a dollar, you may have spent $10, but now you up, uh, what, a grand and a half off a $10 investment just because of like mm. the way art works. So it's basically like, it's not worth money unless it's worth money. So a lot of people are buying these different NFTs so that all of this is basically based off of these digital platforms that are coming out and these new cryptocurrencies that are coming out that are backing these things or the ethereal marketplace opening up their versions of the metaverse because as Facebook is releasing theirs, you got all these other tech companies that are working on theirs at the same time. So when these things are released, the people who got that Tory Lanez thing, they're going to be able to then put that up in their digital house and shit. So it's like a status symbol. It's just like if you got a Picasso, people come to your crib, it's really just a paint on a canvas if you really think about what it is. But it has value. So basically, NFTs, other place value so basically NFTs are like um, digital, um, the digital form of what Jacob was talking about, buying, buying artwork. It appreciates because other people says it does and as other people want it for status. It's basically like anything okay. else because it's such a small market for it. Like, if you notice a lot of the NFTs, even if you have a million, there's billions of people on earth. When the metaverse becomes such a big thing that is like social media that most people are on it, now you got billions of people, but only one million of these things. So you're set yeah. apart. So now because you have that one thing that other people can't have, the rarity gives it status, making it now have value, mm-hmm. pay you more than, way more than what you actually spent. So that's really so all. Basically they just re- so basically they just, rec- um, just invented another asset that improves the value. Right, because again, most of them, a lot of them are backed by a a cryptocurrency. So if it's backed by one Mm -hmm. of the strong ones, which is something like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, um, Litecoin, these ones that have been around for a while, have established track records and have like been growing for years. Now have basically like a way to store your money. So you put ten thousand dollars in these NFTs. If all of them start to go up in value, now that cryptocurrency can then be cashed out as a dollars and then you made however much on top of what you invested. So, yep, digital art is basically a way to look at it. like digital paintings and digital real estate. It works the same for the real estate on the computer. Bet, bet, bet. Just wanted a good concrete understanding of it before I go forth with anything. They're gonna throw a bunch of crazy words at you, but like you know, when you like when you sift through all of the words, like it's basically that's the bare bat brass tacks of how it works and what you use it for. And then yeah, that's basically it. So anybody can have an NFT, but like 
I made us a one of one. It's literally just our black and white pod. You don't see that nowhere on our shit. And they say it's like legend or something like that. But if anybody buys that, if we, when our podcast blows up, they now have a one of one piece of something that no other person gonna be able to have. So now that has value for them and now they can resell it. You see what I'm saying? So it's like shit like that. Yeah, because I was thinking about that. I was thinking about that shit like, um, just doing a figure to so, um the heads, the headshot shits. Cause I was like, cool, all of them are already out. But we could tweak one thing if all of them like we could tweak the hat color and that would be the NFT how many we put out and that'll be that mm-hmm. and people are like, Well, I got this yet, but that ain't the NFT. That ain't the one that's worth whatever what money. Because some shit just like the flu monkey shit, you feel me like Man, I'm just looking at the, the, and all the, the, the it's a company. Yeah, you feel me? I'm just looking at the the NFTs is out now, like the the shit the Snoop Dogg got, um, the shit Eminem just bought shit like that. The monkey jumps. Yeah. It was a lot of people yeah. got like dang, they got these digital skulls. It's like 16 bits. It's like horrible graphics, but they just got different colors and different little designs of this one skull. And them shits is like they've sold millions of these things. But it's because somebody said it has value, and because the trend catches on, everybody else said it got value. So now they want to buy it. Mm-hmm. And then if that thing, so ever my thing, thing is up, like just be being. So now you got it for the ironic. Just being an old school motherfucker. Just being an old school motherfucker. I was worried about I. So what if some massive mass technology fluke happens and some shit fucks up and all this shit goes away? All y'all money, y'all the people goes away. I'm sure it's some type of insurance. I'm sure on each database, some type of insurance to protect the people. But sometimes on them da- on data breaches and shit, some shit ain't insured. So just that's 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 the, just think, that's the gamble. The beautiful thing is cryptocurrency. Um, even though it doesn't operate inside a lot of the parameters as far as the restrictions, a lot of the protections are there that the normal stock market and other um securities markets would give you. Right. So like, if you Say like, and it, and it depends on which cryptocurrencies, again, stuff is backed back. Because back. certain cryptocurrencies are actually, you know, established. They have a track record. So the SEC and other, and other of these uh, regulatory entities, like they have more of a record with them. So they are more likely to have a relationship and protection with, with them. So I'm going to assume that most people are talking about like the big four, which I consider Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin, because those are like the most, four most established ones and the four that have been kind of around long enough to really establish. You got other ones like Shina Ibu and shit, but a lot of them kind of end up being like pump and dump shits that never rebound. So, you know like mean, mean coins. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to just stick with the four established ones. If you got an NFT or you got cryptocurrency based in Bitcoin or something, right? And a data breach or something happens in the cloud or wherever your wallet and your, like all of your shit is stored, say you lose your password, all that shit. You have still insurances in place because there's still a digital track record that doesn't go away. It's just like your computer can fuck up, but that record of everything that happened on that computer, even if it wasn't online, just the internal computer operations, it's, it's still there. It can still be accessed. Wow. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, even on the chips, like if you burn chips, like you still got forensic science, like forensic, uh, what IT people that can go in and still pull the actual data from the chip, even though the chip itself is damaged. So it's like that shit is still there, so they can always find the track record of that blockchain and that chain and that uh transaction shit. And a lot of them, like Ethereum, have like these transaction records. So like you have a literally a digital receipt record of like every time you made a transaction on that thing, how much it was for, how much the fee was worth, and all of that. Because Ethereum kind of works like where you pay a fee on every transaction you do and that fee is how that coin keeps its value because it's always people making transactions. So the money is always returning into that even when people are taking money out. Because to withdraw, you have to pay a fee kind of thing, type of thing. So it's like a community-based coin. So that's why that's been around so long. But like when you're dealing with them top four, they will just basically find the data, go back to it, like your latest transaction that you made, see what that last, uh, thing was, and it'll probably just cash you out in a form of like a settlement check where they give you the last balance of what your crypto was worth at that moment, give you that, and then you can start to reinvest, start a new wallet if you like or whatever the case. But on those big four, because um, I was just watching um, Pocket Watch 
fear he had on this dude. Uh, what happened to common sense? And what happened to common sense is like this dude. He, that's really his lane. He's in. He, he's a crypto investor, NFT investor. Um, that's his shit. And um, JT was like trying to debunk a lot of the NFT shit and stuff. And what happened to common sense went really in depth and like explaining a lot of shit. That's the only reason I have this like actually ready. It's weird that you asked in the same week I saw this live, but that's basically. Yeah, you would be protected from what I understand if you're going with one of the more established ones. But if you get on one of these trendy ones, like kind of the shit that uh, Kim Kardashian and them kind of got wrapped up in somehow or whatever. And um, like some of these celebrities, like them social media influence, like, hey, this new coin that no one knows about, it, like those type of ones, they have. Yeah, I've seen those, yeah. Maybe DM you. Like, um, like secure servers. They haven't built up a relationship or any type of uh, standing with. The regulatory companies they ain't got the, they ain't got the white man behind them. right they don't have the government behind like kind of hobnob with them enough to have like the protections yet so yeah. i would say it's kind of, it, it's kind of like these banks man like if you go with one of the established banks you're probably going to pay more because like all of those top four are probably worth more so you're going to pay more as far as like to actually own a whole coin or get really high it but the payoff gonna be more steady. You you're more guaranteed to get a return on your investment. And if shit go left, you're gonna be protected. It's just like going with Bank of America or Chase or one of these big banks. Like they annoying as fuck. They gonna feed you to death. But you guaranteed that the FDIC is gonna insure your money and get you your shit back if if, if they go if, if some fuck up with them. As opposed to you go with some small bank or some one of these online banks, you, it's easier a lot of times. It's more, it's it's an easier entry point, but it also has less protections because they security parameters to make you feel safe around your money. Mm-hmm. The difference between it's basically the difference between putting your money in your matches and putting your money in the safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Most even, yeah, I can see that. But yeah, just like a stock, like uh, what Uncle Curtis said, that they uh, like go with shit that you know and that you know is established that you trust, because that's more likely to, you know what I'm saying, give you what you're looking for. And I look at, I've used that and I kind of look at basically NFTs and, Bit- and Bitcoin and crypto and all that shit is the same shit as like the shit you can actually look up, research, and get the most information on is probably going to be the safer bet, probably going to be the mm-hmm. smallest jump. You know what I'm saying? But my cousin been in that shit for two years. You know, Christian, that nigga done made like like 20 racks off that shit, uh, off the Bitcoin shit. So like, and, and he just started investing two years ago for real, for real. So like, I'm looking at shit. It's a slow grind, but that's an extra 20 grand on top of your, your normal income in two years just from putting his money there and not touching it. So I'm looking at it like, you know, just like a stock. You trust him, yeah. put the money there if you don't. Fuck off. Tell that shit to fuck off. Yeah, because I'm really trying to do some different shit starting off this year just for the kids and shit. This, you know, Jacob and the Makata Trail, so shit, five more years there being in college. Yeah, you me. So I'm trying to look at an investment to put an investment just to sit and just let flourish for them so I ain't got to look at that just invest in something that I believe in and I trust and I can just, all right, I'm going to take this, these, this, Three hundred dollars, a hundred dollars on each thing, and just let it flourish, and that be each one of them things. So, mm-hmm. it's trying to do something different. So, like, just I've been I've been talking to financial letters and shit, just trying to put it into put it into fruition, man. Huh? Sure. Keep uh, just keep researching and keep implementing as you go. That's literally all I'm doing. Yeah. I'm on the grind, man. Like, I don't yeah. a couple of different hustles, like. Next time I come to Virginia, I'm gonna get back on this sports bed and shit. I, I, I spent what, fifteen dollars, came home two hundred dollars richer. And I roll that shit off of the shit that I do oh, in the football every year for for fucking free just to have fun with my homies from Sean Wan and them. You know what I mean? So I'm like, shit, like that. I I, I didn't got into this NFT shit. I'm doing more research on that before I actually invest. But I done created us a one on one just to make sure that if the shit do jump, like we got something out there to. Drive us some shit, and mm-hmm. goddamn like the crypto. I'd have started investing in that. I'm I'm up a good fifty bucks in the past three days. So yeah, man, just keep like I said, just keep adding to the toolbox. Keep putting your money away and shit you trust and shit that you 
you know, and ride that shit, man. We on the way to the. I'm telling mm-hmm. you, man. I told y'all at college, man, we're gonna be on them yachts, smoking big fat Cuban cigars, looking back like, man, we did that shit, man. Look at that shit. I'm gonna have to split mine over put mud in my shit. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. What's that? Yeah. You wanna split, split his open and put mud, mud in. What? Put mud I'm in. Gonna split it. my Cuban over and put weed in it. Oh, okay. Got you. ST dub. ST dub. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to research how to so I can make a godlike NFT since I already got the trademark or whatever. So I'm trying to research the man, like I safest told way to do that. that. Just like anything else, man. Like if y'all ever want to do like tutorial sessions, like if I don't learn some shit, if y'all want to sit down, just hit me up. We could do a Zoom on the night, and I'll just walk you through exactly what I did and. You be all like y'all learn on the fly like I do. So I get, if I teach y'all to get to where I'm at, y'all can take it from there and you know expand on it. It'd be just like that, you know, I move you anything else. I put you halfway there. Next thing I know, you will I'm passing where I'm at. So, yeah. But this is so uh, but I'm gonna bring something to the table just for y'all, just to keep your eyes out for now. With marijuana coming to be legal in all states within the next 10 years. I'm looking to invest and just start a small investments in like vending machines. We're starting off with like CBD products and like CBD flour working up to like when 2024 or Virginia will be legal for flour. And then you can put, I will put flour in the vending machines, but I will only do vending machines in like, lo, in like certain locations. You feel me? Like, of course, secure location, but with like it being legal in Virginia. I don't know how college campuses feel about it, but it being a legal product, it should be no problem putting it on like college campuses and shit like that. So just think of this thing of one vending machine in the web in the web center. How much money just one machine would make? I would say college is probably gonna go against it just because it's gonna be it's a lot of them still new. Go. Like on campus, even though they might allow drinking on campus, that type of shit. They, so you'll probably be able to smoke your shit on there, but they probably would push it off. But I would say like them convenience stores are right, right around campuses. Mm-hmm. Yep. The little 7 Elevens and shit and shit like that. Like that would definitely like yeah, ideal location, like the college town locations where the kids can walk. I'm just thinking. Really but I'm just thinking on like a, a hustling mentality. So to buy, say I'm buying CBD flour, I could buy an ounce of CBD flour and buy the bags. You feel me? Like the little CBD bags, put them in, which already got the holes in them for like peg hole displays and fill that shit myself. So the overhead as far as buying shit, buying product will be low as shit. And then the profit will be high as shit because you could sell it $9, nine dollars a gram for CBD because CBD I buy now is like between seven and nine dollars a gram, so you wouldn't sell the, the same price as bullet, you would sell it uh, one or two dollars cheaper, but still it got a good quality. So, between Delta 8, Delta 9, and now THCO, and then you got three different qualities and quantities of CBD that's slowly, gradually getting higher and higher in the quantity of THC in it. I would say, yeah, um, yeah. Only thing I would say is make sure you got like good packaging if you're gonna do it like that, just because people are gonna buy off of trust. And a lot of times, like presentation is gonna make the difference in somebody like trusting it off the rip. And like oh yeah, oh yeah, that was- you know what I mean. So just I am just thinking like if I if I'm out in a random place and I see like like normal looking nickel bags and shit in the uh in the vending oh, machine. Nah. Like, oh no. Oh no, the C B D bags. No, not Apple bags. Like the, the, the C B D bags got like certain um names and shit like on it. So like say I'm buying like the strawberry kush C B D. They already got strawberry kush like decorated bags. Like it's like yeah, the um shit you'll see like if you go to like I know now in Virginia you can get like the Lau bag and you can like put your own shit in them, but they look like the shit you get from the dispensary basically. Yeah, 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 I feel that. Yeah, hell yeah, that'll work. That'll yeah, work. it's something like some some descriptive ad packages because you you will also want to advertise the difference between each each strain or each different brand or each different strength of the, the, the CBD because like I said, you got three different brands now. 
like three different strains and qualities, whatever you want to call it. You got the THCO, that's the newest shit, that's the closest thing to actual marijuana out right now, THCO. Then you got the THC9, that's supposed to be almost just like marijuana. Then the Delta 8 shit. But, yep. mm-hmm. but when, but to get into the market, I just got to figure out where to get a fucking vending machine from. True. Tell you exactly what it's going Because I, I, I had the motherfucking snacks. At the, I had the snacks at the bottom and the CBD shit at the top. Shit. Go to the next vending machine you see and just call a number on it. Yeah. Because, no, I mean, it's like, that's cause, like a lot of people don't, don't yeah. mean about it, but like yeah. a lot of that should be that. Like, it's a number yeah, that's just on every vendor machine. But nobody ever thinks to actually like call it for nothing. But like, I bet you if you call it, even if they don't have like the actual information, I bet you they'll be able to patch you into the, like the next step easier than going like trying to Google and calling like a bunch of different random places trying to, you know what I mean? I bet you they'll have a exactly. plan on like, okay, well, this is where we supply from. You can maybe try this vendor or something, you know what I mean? I seen a video one time about a dude that owned, he started off with just one vending machine or whatever. And then he just, one vending machine and then got another one and another one. So and like he ended, literally ended up making millions. Whenever you stack the bread for another one, cause it's like, it's passive income. So even if that shit don't make, but like maybe say you only making like $10 profit every, every month, right? That shit add up. So you, even if you just keep the $10 profit every month, and everything else go back into that one vending machine. It's not something you have to do other than refill. It's not exactly. like you gotta be there every day managing it and telling it what to do and making sure it's clocking in. Like, it's such a massive thing. Like, even when if it it's get, a long term investment, like it's easy for it to at some point pay off, man. Because if you own the actual machine, it's smart because you can always switch what well, switch up what product you're selling in that said machine. Like you can make it Walk a around. You can make it a sneaker vending machine if, if shit go left or you get some new product from some random truck that fall over. You know, what I mean? like you can get make it a oh I, you can get headphones. Get a track with a laundry mat and have your vending machine in every one of their laundry mats. What? How many motherfuckers come into a laundry mat on a day? But now see what but now with a smoke shop, you be cutting into their profits because you sell some of the same stuff they sell. Yeah. So you be like, so like competition within within them. It's like um, it's like why why so why Walmart don't really have a lot of people inside their place that do the shit they do no more. You know how they used to have little places, the business inside there, like they used to have like places that did food, like cook chicken and shit like that. But they cut out yeah. chicken places because Walmart make chicken. So you can't be selling chicken in Walmart. We make chicken in Walmart. Mm. Sure, like that. Oh, uh, true. I feel you trying to have your can't have the people that's taking money from you inside your place. Mm. I understand that, but shit like places like laundry mess and shit like that, that's just open open income. Call like them car washes and shit like outside car washes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Shit. Yeah, man, who don't want to smoke a blunt while they cleaning their car? I do. Shit. Have my new construction sites and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, I don't want them niggas out. <laughs> You see that shit about a nigga who dropped the tape measure off the off the building and killed the nigga? Oh no. Oh shoot. With the tape measure? The nigga it's dropped the tape idea. measure off like the yeah, dropped the tape measure out of his pocket on accident, fell through, fell, fell all the way down, went through the nigga, went through the other nigga hard hat and killed him. Jeez. My God. Yeah. Yeah. A tape measure, nigga. <laughs> My God. That high in the sky, just, that's all. My man had just got out of his car, was walking to the site. Boop, and that's it. God damn. God bless him and his family. That's all you can say. That's all you can say, brother. That's all you can say, brother, man. Damn. Way to talk, right, buddy? Walking, walking to work, next thing you know, you see all these clouds. Wait a minute. What? What? Yeah. Just went to work. Uh, trying to make this move, man. I'm trying to do some different shit this year, man. We're really trying to get the fuck out of here where I'm at now. Getting tired of saying what I'm saying now. 
right on. Oh, she, done found, she done found two or three different houses she want me to go look at. One, one joint is three acres, um, like three or four bedroom house on a joint for 72000 It ain't bad, but we're going to have to gut the whole house and do the whole house over. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But for 72000 three acres of land and the structural of the house, you really, that ain't, that, that's not bad at all. Mm. Yeah, I ain't talking to anything like that. I ain't give up my, my location. But yeah, just trying to do something different. You feel me? So I mean, like, because niggas need more space at the end of the day. Shit. Got the kids, the dog, and everybody trying to do their own thing. Everybody getting older. More space is, of course, needed. But I want to make sure I'm making the right move on whatever I'm fucking doing. Yeah. 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 They say I don't know. Coochie, coochie, coochie. No, I said they said make your next move your best move, but you definitely want to make sure you're planning it out to make sure that it it actually is the the best move and it works best. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. That's my thing. I just want to make sure the next move is the best move is the last move. <laughs> next I ain't trying to move no more. Last yeah. one, best one. <laughs> The junk, the the brand new junk in Virginia, the the junk we gotta fix up, that's in North Carolina. And uh, I don't mind moving out of state; that ain't never the problem. I just gotta be comfortable with the surroundings and the area. That's my whole thing. We're moving to a, a brand new area without knowing nobody, and I just gotta feel. Just you know how you go into an area and like, I, I feel like the the energy in this area is cool. You feel me? Even if you don't know nobody in the area, you just feel like I right, it's some something about here just makes me it's it's homely. Oh yeah, that's how I feel here. So I, I definitely get it. I totally understand. You feel me? And I would say so. I from where you live, you feel me? I've been to where you live. I like where you live. And I often defend you where you live because I meet a lot of people from from from, from down there up here. And they were like, "What are you offer my brother down there?" And I'm like, "They were like, oh no, I don't like that. That's a bunch of um, uh, uh, rednecks." I'm like, "No, that's from what I've seen. I've been down there. It's a bunch of what uh, rednecks." I'm like, "No, I uh, don't see them. I, you know, it I've is. never seen them. It is. It's not in my neighborhood per se, but in the city, like there's pockets of them, but they're not like they're not like negative rednecks, like." They're the type of red that that'll be like their normal red leg self, but they'll have like also have like black grandkids and black nephews and black children. So it's like it's see that's normal. It's, it's so just, to it's me, that's normal like, because like, everybody, we everybody just kind of cool with everybody out here. Like it ain't no you mean, like rah, that's rah, normal rah. to me because we where we from. So that's normal to me for where we from. Like the eight hundred four, that's like that. <laughs> I mean, like that's normal. So when people be saying, that, I was like, well. You know, I don't see it as, as you try to describe it. <laughs> It'd be like going out to the Connolly's farm back in high school. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's red, Nick's, but oh, not for real. <laughs> like everybody just kind of chilling together. You know, just exactly. Uh, country folk, you know, that's that's pretty like you know, they call red nicks. It's really just country folk. <laughs> that's no idea. You know, but that's yeah. no idea. She is. Well, don't call me him brown neck. Other than being a black neck, oh, that's gonna be a real like a throw this time. Shit. Ooh, okay, yes, Lord. Get this party started. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Y'all want this party started right? Mm-hmm. Y'all want this party started quickly? Quickly, set it up. Set it up, y'all. Set it up, y'all. Set it up. 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 Set it up.
I'm like, oh, listen, it's like, damn, they tried to hit every part, every part of the home, and it didn't. <laughs> what up, guys? Welcome to the pot. A show with three friends separated by this connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I have one third of the partners, and I'm along with the other third of the partners here tripping off that intro is the Padawan, and I am along with some guy building a rocket in the background, but dramatic pause. I'm along. <laughs> You know it's me here facing the place. Don't know about the race, but I'm here. John DeMarco, we in here, we in here, we in here. We back for episode 61, big baby. How y'all feeling this week, fellas? As you can tell, I'm in a good mood. How y'all doing, man? I'm all right. <laughs> I'm good. No big deals. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good talk. Uh, well, you know, Gucci. that's a rest of the week for me so far. Uh, even though we just saw each other last night, well, I guess that's kind of why we don't have as much to check in on. But uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I had probably the first like really. Mm-hmm. really fully happy day since I've been back to work. Like, since I've been back to work, uh, back in December, like, it's been like, it would be happy moment, but it, like, it can't, I can't sustain it all day because the anxiety and, like, just the, the tension is just, like, so overwhelming. Like, today was, like, the first day where it was, like, a, a bit of a smooth day. Like, I was still wound up all day, but I had like really happy moments and it was so much that it sustained me all day. Like I felt happy all day to the point where like I, I didn't have any down moments. And that's like the first time that's happened outside of me being in my home, feeling safe and secure since the shit went down, you know, and went left. So yeah, man, life is good, motherfucker. Yeah. You're glad to hear it, damn. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, man. How you so, baby? Oh, that's good. Well, shit, I can't complain. I mean, um, I done had the last three days off of work. I go back tomorrow on my birthday. But hey, I'd rather be making money on my birthday than spending money on my birthday. So I take it as possible. So we've been right, okay so far. Right. All cash apps going straight to the bo- to the birthday guys, man. Uh, if you miss Pat on his birthday, go ahead hit it up. Face birthday is tomorrow. Go ahead hit it up. 19th and uh it was the 30th. So uh yeah man. Go ahead hit the go ahead hit the bros up, man. Show them that birthday love, big baby. Oh yeah, oh yeah. B day all day. Turn that big three nine out here. Look 25, turn it 30 in the Dang, fuck it. I don't look it. Look they say you as old as they say you as old as what you look. So, and I still get caught in for tobacco, so I'm Gucci. Yeah, yeah. but you know, some old people still is, still old. I'm glad it ain't. I'm glad it ain't any um as old as you feel, because you know sometimes <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> it's like. Oh, <laughs> I'm with you. Been like you all the ninety. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a t- yeah. I'm I am I am thirty eight, and I feel like I am thirty eight. I yep. I am exactly what I am. Uh, yeah, it ain't no faking it no more. I you know I had them little moments approaching it where I was like, oh, second win. No, we back. We gonna feel like we took. No, I, I'm thirty eight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I had I had those moments. I, I, I I'm thirty eight, so I just you know I'm just getting I'm just getting wise. You need ain't no second win. That's the last little bit of gas you had in the car. Right Make on. you home. I've learned that. You know what? People gonna be telling me I'm getting old. I'm like, you know what? I'm glad with all that age because I was with them. 
Man. Embrace it. But age comes. Yes, age, God damn it. There's somebody that ain't making it right now. Like the way people been dropping these big bag over here, man. I'm I, please let me yo, let me hit one more birthday, please. Let me keep hitting them. Yes, let, me, let, let me make at least 80. No, I want at least see 40 more. Please, at least 40 more. Man, damn for my but, Let's start the show off, man. We do. We're going to start the show off with the financial tip for this week, man. Um, if y'all tuned in for the before the intro convo, y'all heard a little bit of what I'm about to talk about. Educate yourself, man, on NFTs and cryptocurrency. With new technology comes new ways of making and saving money. These are the new things coming. If you don't educate yourselves on it, they're going to come and pass you back. You're going to miss your chance to make a good amount of money. Um, educate yourself. So you don't know much about NFTs and cryptocurrency right now, do your research, educate yourself. If you don't know how to do your research, if you know somebody that got some, a little bit of knowledge, ask them the question. Ain't nothing wrong with asking questions, man. Get your knowledge any way you can, but educate yourself on NFTs and cryptocurrencies and invest. Right on. I'm about to turn my um, image right here into an NFT. No, I'm about real. to turn. I'm about to turn me into an NFT. Hey, there you go. No, Get that one, man. No, this real life is getting on my nerves. Hmm? Get that money. Fail yourself, but the image is fine. Fail that. You know, ain't mad at that. Don't, don't fail yourself, though, champ. You know? Oh <laughs> man, man, dog. You know what they doing on these Oculus? You can do anything on the Oculus. Anything. Oh yes, indeed. about to get myself indeed. right in the metaverse and just stay there. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> shit. Now to keep the show rolling on, I'm gonna give y'all some shit to make you think. The first one is here. I mean, this week. Excuse me. This year. <laughs> if Marilyn Monroe, if Marilyn Monroe was still alive, she'll be the same age as Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. We only see her, we only see her and adore her at her young age because all you see is young pictures because she died young. If she never died, she'd be the same age as Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. If she never died and she actually lived, she would be basically like what this Taylor ended up, ended up with in her later years. Like that legend that, you know, we know, but. That would be my thought. Or she would end up being like one of them, uh, like the tiger lady from New York who got way too much plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. uh, if I give me another white acro, she'll be another bar. Six out. <laughs> Same age for sure. Now, second one. Second shit to make you think. Now I heard they did a little study on this. I forgot what I was watching. It was someone's on. It was on YouTube. Don't know exactly what channel. So I can't reference it, but this is the basic premise. No man has a- ever really seen an actual dinosaur to say what it looks like. Right. Yet we have many pictures and models of dinosaurs, dinosaurs and their facial features. Correct. We have imagined what they look like based on skeletons. Right. But if we use that same knowledge on regular animals, no animal that we have right now would look the way they actually do if we did what we did with dinosaurs. So my thing is, how do dinosaurs act, did, excuse me, actually look? Um, we don't know how dinosaurs actually look, just like we don't know what most animals that we were, like. we were here look like, to be honest. It's all based off like... Uh, speculative evidence. So like they just use the evidence of like its closest relatives that we can find today and then use those models to, and based on what those, their skeletons actually look like when they put them together, they kind of combine those two things and they make a guess, which is why all of the images look different. You can have a raptor that has no feathers then one that's fully feathered, then one that has just a feather. Mm -hmm. And they all technically could be correct as long as the actual it, you will notice though that always the, ana- the anatomy the basic structure of the animals are the same it's just like those exactly. colors and shit and, and like scale features and shit like that so I, I think it's like yeah no we don't know what none of that shit look like though like even a mammoth like we know it's 
related to the elephant because they're we can look at a dead elephant now and see a skeleton and see it resemble, but we still don't know that it actually looked like what we model them to look like because we didn't see. Just imagine the the internal racism between raptors if you had some of them that had feathers and some of them that didn't you know you you could just tell like you could just imagine the caste system they would have like um, look at all my feathers gotta, people don't really <laughs> look at all my feathers the way humans act is completely natural which is why we got to stop fighting against it and just use it to our advantage it's like all there's always going to be a rank and file system in the animal kingdom like the like the reason oh, you yeah. can turn peacocking is because literally mating is determined on who got the coolest feathers or who can do the dance the coolest to make the female like choose them. So like it's like when the the evolution and the continuance of your species depends on you being the coolest. Like, oh yeah, it ain't even racism. It's just like, nigga, we gotta get the bloodline going, champ. Sorry. I got feathers. Come on. I got feathers. Come on. <laughs> Here's what it is, man. And if you want to find the motherfucker, then you got to find that one <laughs> straggling <laughs> raptor lady that just couldn't catch one of the the, 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 the main dudes with the feathers and just, she just kind of over there like, well, hey. Free <laughs> history from the partners. I think. What up? Yeah. Let me let me six foot chickens walking around and shit. Let me expound on Teaser's point as far as she said. A lot of shit we do is just regular human nature, just part of nature, and we need to stop fighting against it. Okay. Now we see how humans intervene on animal shit sometimes. I'll say like you got a what's the call? Like not a national park, but a national observatory or some shit like that. We got all the different animals and shit. And they have one sect, <laughs> you may have one sect of animals, and they're about to kill, like destroy a whole nother group of animals, and that group of animals will be gone. Humans will intervene right there, right? In most most cases, humans intervene. But in human, like in the human sense, we choose when we intervene more often you feel me based off how we feel about the per the people but when it comes to animals it's like everybody is all all open arms with animals and want to care about animals more that's just me some just some other type of shit you feel me i just feel like people care more about fucking animals than they do humans but uh, if I, we had the same I, history, that's the you feel me yo i'm all for the genocide of mosquitoes yeah. All those mosquitoes <laughs> got to die. Hey, I'm man, all for the all genocide bugs. of mosquitoes. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> take all the bugs, except for like non uh, bees. Uh, like, uh, we need bees. They yeah, but anyway. on, only the species of bees that don't have the stingers, like the little fat ones, are just fuzzy as fuck. Mm-hmm. Them little stinger motherfuckers, oh, like they can go. I don't need no June bugs. Oh, like, no more bugs than you. Really doing you know, Africanized uh, killer bee. I don't need none of that crazy shit. Give me just the- All that stuff from 2020. Me. Yeah, no, I don't need no. none of that extra shit. No. You know I, mean? I, I can't stand on green like, June bugs that just be flying you. around take because they can't uh, see. Take them loud ass crickets with you. Take snakes. Uh, poisonous snakes. No, man. Uh, you can take the poison one, I guess. I ain't really no viper fan. Them, yeah. them big fat June bugs that just be flying around like like little airplanes and they blind and they be knocking into everything. I hate those motherfuckers, <laughs> man. I hate them. They just be smacking me in the head and stuff. And I'm thinking, uh, oh, what, what what was that? Yeah, Freaking jet uh, just fly through my ear. Yeah, most six leg things can go. Yeah. I'm cool with spiders, to be honest. I mean, I ain't you can get you can get rid of the poisons one if you want to, but. I'm cool with the like rack. Yeah, and pedophiles, they can go to they can all of them. Mm-hmm. I think that's they make it all down. Yeah, I roll with that. Uh, yeah. I don't know where that came from. Uh you got something on your heart you need to talk about. Everything all right. Fuck them, Nick. Fuck, fuck them. Okay, I got I got one last one. <laughs> I won't go include this one this week, but I'm gonna include this one. Uh, I, number three was shit to make you think. I won't go include this one because I won't so sure about this one, but fuck it. Oh, well, we all going to be not too sure about it. 
right. Now say Martin Luther say Martin Luther King Jr. never died, right? And he was set alive today. And the news about his alleged infidelities came out. Do you think in today's society they will try to cancel him? Yes. Or that his historic actions and strides will stand out and people would be like, oh well, that's just Michael. He'd be all right. Oh, no, Don't let, worry about what he did. He's like, um let me rant on this. <laughs> let me rant on this. Can I get my they, quick as I got go, go ahead, bro? Go ahead. All I would say is I think if you look at society, they would not cancel him just because of the fact that it's only infidelity. It's not like he did something like crazy egregious. That ain't get like infidelity cheating ain't getting people canceled it just he would definitely be in the news cycle but um i think he'd still have his shit um on the personal level i don't revere no other man like that anyway so it ain't like like i respect him but i wouldn't really care like I, you know hey all right he still still helped get civil rights act passed cool but yeah go ahead pat now i know personally i wouldn't care but i know that somewhere in the metaverse, there will be someone to care and try to ride that train on to the to, into stardom. I don't know who, but it will be somebody. You know, I don't know if it'll be a Fox News person or a CNN. Why well, can't really know? Because because every time Martin Luther King Day come around, they always use his speech as a way of like um, justifying the fuckery they talk about. Yeah. So I I can't really really say about that. Now, and for people and politicians that do that you the worst kind of fucking human in the world <laughs> fuck you anyway <laughs> anyway <laughs> going yeah. on tonight you all right brother <laughs> mm, maybe you had a conversation with me before tonight like, what what politics what, what were you were you watching fox news were you watching fox news fox? no man don't fuck man i can't talk what the fuck <laughs> uh, <you>? nah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um but yeah, uh somebody will. I ain't gonna say everybody will. I don't think you'll get totally canceled or whatever, but somebody's gonna try to ride that train, Paul. <laughs> ride it, choo-choo. Come on, ride that train. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was an awesome song back in the day. Good for cookouts. Yo, I swear I don't. I don't, I, I'm not di- self-diagnosed, but uh, it would not surprise me if I <laughs> found out I had a uh, uh, ADD or something going on. ADHD, there's something going on with like, my brain. I think we all do. I think that's why we all get along, because we all do. Yeah. And some people before, but we all have different forms of the on the spectrum. I think we all do. Oh, yeah. I just I'm, think I'm crazy. Something's going on there, buddy, and I love it. And I love it. Boom, chicken, boom. Sorry to cut your wisdom. Go ahead, finish your rant, Pat. My bad, my bad. Oh, no, I don't even remember no more, man, but fuck them people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck them people. But just to build on what you said, Pat, if anybody did and say ride that train, I think it would be Candace Owens. Candace Owens? Oh, yeah. 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 I, don't know I can see her taking that thing. She'll, she'll use it to try to like just credit everything else he did. I, I could definitely see that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Or oh, Lori. Oh, what's that? What's that white bit name? Lord, I, I, Tommy I, I'm, 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 Yeah, I'm definitely Tommy not Lord. politically correct on that one. But yeah, yeah, Tommy. Yeah, her. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she probably. Yeah. She probably. Tommy need to work out trying, trying to keep her man. Probably say something like Patri- patriarch or something. But no, she'll, do it. she'll she'll make it about her because you know I think her uh fiance or husband she her and that's why she got divorced or separated or whatever. So I remember she did a rant. On yeah, her, I think so. That shit or some shit. So like I think she tried to make it about her. Just just she seems like the type that would like. All right, oh, time to talk about me, guys. Uh, and and men hurting shit. Look, even Martin, even your savior, he he fucked up because you know my husband, you know he wasn't shit either. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. if ever you you have a wife to act like you it's a reason why it's a reason it might not tell you but it's a reason reasons 
I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be a devil advocate. I'll be devil advocate. She might not act like that at home. That may just be her actual stage presence and how she just that is, is the, the character, the, her character. You feel me? That may just be the character she portrayed. But if it is, she does a pretty good damn job. Because I, I believe that's who you really are, goddamn. A lot of her in there. Um, I think uh, she took. When I look at how she moves around, and even like how Charlemagne kind of spoke on how her behind the scenes, behind the scenes she was when they had their little sit down that time and all that, like I think that that's it. May be like Stone Cold, where it's like this is a uh, more um, embellished. I'm playing a part. Yeah, but I'm, I'm playing, playing just me. Just kind of ramped up to ten, but it's still mm-hmm. like the root of who me. I am. And I'll be honest, even if it ain't her. You know how you just get that vibe? I, I'm very good with reading vibes, and I just feel like she would be annoying as fuck at home. I feel like mm-hmm. has a lot to do with how she ended up singing. Like, I'll be honest. Like, oh. I don't think all women that get kicked off reason, but I've got a good feeling that she probably ain't saying she, dude should have cheated, but I understand why he probably wanted to get away. Yeah. Get away, get away, get away now. Like she seems gotta, like the type that have like that that have you sitting in the in the uh in the fucking driveway for like you know an hour and a half just kind of listening to music trying to zone out before you go in the house like oh, washing your car in the rain. Oh, <laughs> nigga just sitting in the car, car in the rain. Carbon shit. monoxide to catch me before I gotta go up in here. Oh, that I was there. Like, I was there like 10, 15 years ago. I was there. <laughs> yeah, <I'm just> <laughs> like there's a reason some dudes. You ever know them dudes that work to like air, like you be ready to go home, and they be like, "Hey man, let's go out before work, man. Go, go, let's go out real quick, you know, and have a couple of drinks. Or let's go out and hang for. <laughs> it ain't too mad. Wait till they sleep. You got no wife or nothing. You got no kids. You gotta go see. Oh, yeah, this is so, yeah, yeah, the exact know. reason why I'm going yeah, you out. Know, why you always want to hang out? Oh, I see. Help me, please. My kids, they're so bad. Yeah, you My go, wife, she annoying. You go to the company picnic, and all of a sudden, you understand exactly why that nigga don't ever want to go home. I, I got She it. can't cook. Understand. She can eat, though. You know what? <laughs> we be having leftovers. You, you can come out of the crib sometime if you need a place. You know, I, I got the couch downstairs in the garage, in the basement, man. You know, you swing by, brother. <laughs> I, I see you. <laughs> My son get... Treat, treat, treat that shit like rare roof in, man. I'll leave the light on for you, player. I understand. I understand. <laughs> My son get picked on and he the bully. I, please, man, please. <laughs> well, uh, if we're going to be talking I about to hang out. Women, I think this is a perfect time to just go head on into my shit, man. Uh, another installment of this is Red Pill Matrix Decoded. Um, this is the series where we look at red pill ideals, talking points, um, or just uh, things that I've heard them say. And we look at them from just a regular real man perspective and see if they're valid, if they hold weight, um, if there's gems that we could take from it, or if it's just complete rubbish. Um, in the past two weeks, we've already debunked and redefined and correctly defined alpha and beta males um, and re-established that they are not determined by income. Um, we also defined and debunked what a real strong woman is to actual men. And um Established that they are actually desirable to real men or can be desirable to real men um, when you properly establish what a strong woman is. Um, so tonight I wanted to take a look at the next talking point of the Red Pill community, um, and that is that men need to be the best looking in shape or and or have the most money to get high quality women. Um, so I wanted to kind of first start before we dig into the overall, uh, I guess, statement and just kind of define what do you guys see as act what makes a woman high quality? Quality. Quality. Yeah, high quality woman. So, you know, you got high value men and you got like these high quality women. Um, what make, what, what do you look at as a high quality? Shoot, uh, it is almost the same as what you would call a strong, a strong woman, but high quality is more like, they can teach you something. I would I would say if you break it down to like what they def- define what it is, but 
she's someone that can hold it down and actually teach you something to better yourself or whatever. I would, that would be my high version of a high quality. Okay. <clears throat> Face mark. Well, I want to start off by saying first what a high quality woman or an example is not of is um, if y'all look at these reality shows and y'all see these women acting a damn monkey, that's not what an example is. Um, just because you look wealthy or have wealth, that doesn't equal quality or high quality of that. Just, um, just that, a ratchet with just, a wallet. It, it basically, um, um, high quality. I think that's. Um, something of substance, something that can, um, as Pat said, help you learn, help you build, um, but that falls back on what a strong, a strong woman is, um, but of high quality and the high substance. Um, to put into a word, I, I see it as a woman who has achieved a certain thing in life, whether that be whatever goal she has achieved, whatever got a goal she has set for herself, I should say. And she knows what she wants in a partner and she's not going to settle. Um, she's willing to be with someone who's not there as long as they're willing to attain those expectations. She has her expectations set and that's just that um, high quality. Um, I see that a lot of women, they may have expectations um, and they just, they see themselves as of some quality, but they allow the expectations not to be met and they are quick to settle just to have the comfort of having or being with someone, regardless of a man or a woman. But um, I don't see that as quality because that's the same quality you see on a lot of those women on reality TV. Um, in and out of those relationships, they talk, I, I want this, I want this, he needs to do this. Then you see him with a man who's nothing like that, and they settle in there. All oh, lovey dovey. So, once again, it falls back to my example of what one is not. Because to put it in words, a, a, a real literal sense of what I really mean of what a high quality woman is, yeah, I really can't. But I can tell you one, what one ain't, if I can say that. Gotcha. Quality. Um, I definitely would say for me, um, I would say I definitely agree on the ability to like uh kind of enhance what you got going already in some way, whether that be uh bringing a certain skill set of knowledge to maybe like your business or like where you see like your family planning or whatever the case may be, um, and being able to add to that. Um, I definitely think uh being able to help you build is important to like being able to have a, like a support system that's going to be your partner as opposed to like, uh, I guess an anchor that you're dragging along, like more somebody that's like, all right, so if you got this, I got this, let's put this together. How are we going to make this into a bigger empire and then boost you, which is going to boost me. And then we boost each other again and we keep growing this thing. Um, so I'm definitely with y'all on that. Um, I definitely think for me, I would definitely say, uh, face uh and i'm not talking about my brother face I'm, i mean like literally how your face looks um to me that's important if you're going to call yourself high quality because that's something that like at the end of the day all men and and that can be you know obviously beauties and out of beholders or whatever you think a beautiful uh when you think of a beautiful face but at, at some point that comes into play because that's least likely to deteriorate or modify tremendously from age as opposed to a body. Now, you know, they got surgeries for all of that shit, but like, I feel like if you got a naturally beautiful face, as the body deteriorates, I'm gonna still look at you every day and be like, damn, you fine. You know, at least two bones. As opposed to you being okay in the face or something to me, and then I look up in 20 years and then I'm like, your show is ugly. Okay, the shit and drop that I used to like, that ain't sitting where it used to sit no more. And now your face ain't. No, I'm good. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I think that's actually important. But again, that's more of a personal thing. I noticed that um the the two main things that we all three had in common had for one, nothing to do with looks. 
and this is really three completely different perspectives because like if you ever seen like our lineage of like girlfriends, women we've dated, et cetera, like for the most part, unless it was some old, some old <laughs> college shit, uh, there's not a lot of overlap in like our taste. Like we each kind of have a certain thing that we go for, a certain <laughs> like kind of thing that we each like. So when you see that we have overlapping qualities, I noticed there was just no look there. So that says a lot as opposed to what is normally seen as a high quality woman from other, um, from what I've seen from the Redfield community as what they usually define a high quality woman as is um, on the beauty scale or like the normal, as far as the ideal beauty scale of what society sees as the ideal beauty. Um, they would say you gotta be like at least an eight out of 10. Um, they would say that you have to be um, more of a submissive type um, you have to be um, willing to kind of take care of the home. You also have to be willing to allow the man to dominate pretty much the every aspect. And that's the high quality woman. It's like the, and to me, that shit that's sounds like in 2020, like just, be, I mean, 2022, just because of the way like socialization and people growing up has changed over the years, like, women just aren't socialized to do that anymore because there's so many examples of the opposite. So I, I don't think that's even realistic anymore, which is why I noticed, again, three different men from three different perspectives kind of all yeah. what I really think is Let me speak. what a high quality. Let me speak on personal experience. Huh? Now, I've had a woman in my past who was that totally submissive woman would do anything I say. I was dumb and not argue, not have nothing to say. Like, that shit got boring. That no, I need someone who's gonna who who who's gonna stand up against my bullshit. Call me on my shit. I need that. You feel me? Like, any man who wants to just walk around his house with just yeah, when I say so, go. And you not knowing when you bullshitting or you fucking up, and somebody just allowing that. Now, that's not a partner to me. Like no. Nah. I left that relationship. I broke it. Like, I told him, like, I can't do this shit. Like, you don't say shit. Like, you, this is boring. I need some interaction. Like, I, I need someone who, when I know I'm doing something stupid, somebody else going to be telling me, you know they're stupid. You know you're doing something that you Yeah, you right. Thank you for pulling me back in. It's <laughs> like, that, that, that's someone aiding in your growth and your life journey. You don't want somebody who just lets you stay stagnant in, in, in your life journey. You, you you don't want to be 60 looking back and be like, damn, I've been doing the same thing since I was 30. That's just me. You feel me? I don't know about, I don't know about all the other guys out there, all the other men. You got, they, they say to each his own. Like, if that's what you like, go ahead. With a person like me, a progressive intellectual like me, like, I, I want a woman who's going to be my yin to my yang. You feel me? Like, I, 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 I can't have nobody who's just going to be totally submissive and yeah, I'm just gonna stay here cooking clean and you're gonna No man, like what can you what yeah, can you I, do? I, I can't I base understand. everything on looks because what what if your looks go away? Like your looks fade. Mm -hmm. Like like okay, you were eight, but you just got in a car accident. Now what? Am I gonna leave you? Or or was there some substance there between us that you brought that makes me stay? Like you can't be based off on looks. That that makes the man look real shallow. Feel me like yeah, that's just me, man. And I, I think these alpha red pill, pill motherfuckers be the OD sometimes because I, I don't, I don't want to worry about every decision. Maybe I would want somebody that is intelligent enough to make decisions on their own. Maybe because we can split the uh the day-to-day -day struggles whatever if uh you know i can handle this and then you don't have to worry about this and you can handle that and i don't have to worry about that vice versa whatever these guys be coming off like i want to do this i gotta uh, i gotta pick what you wear <laughs> i i gotta pick what time you wake up <laughs> eat and all that other nah nah man i don't want that much mm -mm. And I it's think a wife not a child man and I think that goes back to the point I was making. Like, I noticed you got three different perspectives. I'm shallow as fuck. 
I had look, looks on my list. But I noticed the overlap comes to what I think we really are defining a high quality, quality woman as, and that's somebody who builds with you, helps you to grow, and is able to add to what you got going on, whether that be teaching you something, whether that just being having the knowledge or skill set that adds to what you're trying to do and, and, and adds to that universe you're building. Or, you know what I'm saying, that just they got your back and they supporting you and you and y'all rolling together, you know what I mean? But I think it's more based off of the support factor as opposed to the submissive factor or the looks factor or some of the other things that may be more um, subjective and more or based on the individual as opposed to like kind of the overarching thing. Like when, when you see something like that, you go with the overlaps, not the outliers. So we redefine. First of all, a high quality woman is going to be a woman that can teach you something and that can help you build. So we look at more the support factor than looks and other things. So that's what a high quality woman is based off of what three different real men said. And we said it, so that's what it is. So the next part of uh, this kind of paradigm that I wanted to look at is now that we know what Hold I'm going to Before we move forward to the next part, I want to revisit the looks thing. Not, I wasn't saying that if you think looks important makes you shallow. I was saying to the extent that the other guys base looks on their qualification makes them shallow. Now, everybody has something they look for, you feel me? So in each of our own eyes, looks is important to a certain extent. So that qualification itself is not a qualification for shallowness. And I was going to say, and I was going to say that you're not shallow because I was thinking that I just didn't say it because I'm so shallow. I thought that already was, that goes without saying. <laughs> yeah, and I was just I saying. That, yeah. I thought that was already the rule. Like, I'm shallow as fuck. That's all I was saying. Like, uh, <laughs> that just kind of was just, <laughs> yeah, I'm shallow. I, looks important like a motherfucker to me. Like, my wife won't You got to have a fat head and do my taxes. No, no I told you, this is how face with me. Like, the, the rest of it, like, man, at the end of the day, when, when shit bent over and shit twerked up, like, everything kind of ended up looking the same at certain point. With, as long as, as long as you got no, like, crazy obese or crazy bony person, like, the average woman with an average woman body, like, you know, lights go on my own. <laughs> I like titties. You got titties. Okay. You got a butt. I, like I can grab it. I, I don't care. Um, but this right here is what I'm looking at. Like when I look down on you, I want to see something looking back up that keep keep everything rolling. You know what I mean? I don't want to look at it. Real estate oh, back oh, let me look turn back it. At it. I, I don't want to live off just doggy style. Like nigga like me, I like to get some <laughs> I want to my woman in the eyes shit. If you my wife, like I want to make love to your ass sometimes. I ain't trying to just fuck all the time. So I want to be able to look down and get sensual. And you can't get sensual when donkey looking back up. like, in the morning, I'm making a waffle. No, fuck that. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, oh, again, yeah, I'm shallow as fuck. But uh, I do like waffles, but the second part of the paradigm was, or the whole paradigm was that men need to be the best looking, the most in shape, or have the most money to get these higher quality women. And I wanted to see, we define high quality women, but is that accurate? If not, why? If so, why? Um, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all go because I might go against the grain. Nah, That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. You wanna grab it face before I go? Go ahead, go. Say the relevant my answer. Huh? I say I'm still putting my thoughts together for the answer. Go ahead and go. Uh, no doubt, I got you. Um, I actually think it's somewhat accurate. Um, I don't think that you have to be the best looking or the most fit or the make the most money. I do think that those areas being somewhat secure is where you get the confidence from. And I think that the confidence is what actually makes women attracted to you. Because I think when they're looking at these things like, you can redefine them. Like if they're talking about society's version of each of these things, then I don't know that that's true. But I do think that if you're a man that is super happy with all of these areas and to you, you like it. Like if you're a Rick Ross that likes his body in a certain way and he's cool with being a certain size and that's fit him and he's happy, he's confident with that. And even though it's not what everybody else might like, 
he likes it. If he was broke as fuck and busted, <coughs> excuse me, if he was broke as fucking busted, I think he would still get women if he feels like he's the shit. Because I think a lot of what actually attracts the opposite sex for sex for anything is confidence. Like even for women, like that shit plays a factor. Like because you, like we've all seen the girl back in the day that was like, she's not really cute, but something about her got all these guys that like like her and are like attracted to her. But it's it's not her look. It's more like. The, the swag, the, the way she carry herself makes her attractive. It's like that. It gives her that sex appeal. And I think that that can carry a lot of more weight than the other. If you're, <laughs> so if you, you can be the most fit and have the most like stereotypical good looks to women. But if you're a cornball and you can't carry a conversation and you can't really do anything with that, then to the woman, like, after the initial conversation, they're going to lose interest. As opposed to a dude that might be busted ugly, broke as fuck, but, and, and chunk and chunky, like fusky, like thick husky, like just fluff fluff, right? But he got so much confidence, he can make her laugh, he can carry a conversation, he, he got some good sense, he knows some shit, he can like kind of intrigue her on, on the intellectual level, like, he'll probably still get further than the other dude just because, like, once the door's open, the door ain't getting shut. He's going to continue to crack the door open, open more and more and more. Whereas the other dude, the door might be wide open, but then as soon as he stepped foot in the house, that shit got shut in the face. You feel me? So I, I think it kind of, mm -hmm. I, I think that it plays a key to an extent. So when they say that, I get what they're saying. I think it needs to be reframed, though, in my opinion. Which also, well, I can agree with you. Um, I, I really do think that confidence plays the biggest part, um, because we all know that the ugly dude, the ugly broke dude who got the girls, and everybody's like, "How the hell he get with?" But it's just something about that dude, and his personality that attracts that girl or that group of girls. You feel me? Like yeah, he's constantly with one. You feel me? Like. It never fails. Like, hey, I remember when you got I, that dude. If you remember, uh, five zero, <laughs> that moved to our school in high school, but she was five zero on the step team back in the day in middle school. <laughs> and if you remember that, to this day, nobody knows how that happened. You feel me? Like, that has always um, be something like if you believe, they will believe. <laughs> like just, just me personally, like I, I've fallen for a girl just in the confidence in her stride and her walk. It's like damn, her walk just damn. It's something about her walk that just drew me to her. Like that was in my past, but I mean, I can understand it. Like you said, I can I, I can definitely understand where they come from. I don't I don't totally align with, with the views, but I can understand and empathize with their view. You know, so. Right on. Big dog pet, what say ye? How you feel about it? Um, Do you have to be I thought I was gonna I thought I was gonna go against the brain, but not too much. I really think it's more confidence than any of the, that stuff anyway, like no matter if they best looking or in shape, really, it's just confidence. Majority of the time, if you're if you got your stuff in order, that's going to automatically give you confidence or whatever. So, and I've seen some people that just don't have nothing in order and have the, all the confidence in the world, and they will snag up everything. I ain't just talking about women. I'm talking about opportunities, all that stuff. So. Really, I really think a lot of times when these red pill people be talking about the best looking in shape or uh, they need money and stuff like that, I, I, I just sense that they're about to sell some kind of stupid seminar or some book or some <laughs> shit. You want to tell that? I really feel like that's that's what they're gonna that's what they're really talking about. Like, yeah, um, yeah, just get into our financial plan and we'll tell you how to be a high value 
quality man. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna you get know, it. I'm gonna get pay it. your bills and wear a suit one time, and yeah, you high quality. I'm shit. next week, so bring no bring those no thoughts next week because I'm definitely gonna get into uh, that next week. Um, to be continued. I think the dope thing is. Uh, <laughs> I had a question after this, but in answering that one, it seemed like we've all kind of defined what actually is the key to getting a high quality woman. And that seems to be like the consensus being just the confidence. Like, I'll be honest, like back in college, like I was the ugliest in my crew and I still bag <laughs> Boku. Boku buns, just because I believe. <laughs> I believe. I say like this. If you believe. I've always been. I've always looked like I look now. Um, dudes who had in college, dudes had all the money. Dudes was the athletic ones, and the same girls they was getting that was pawning over them was pawning over me too. So it is what it is. Confidence. I'm gonna be real with y'all, Pod Squad. I always been gorgeous. I just didn't have the confidence. So that's why a lot of people got more, more bag, more chicks to me. See, I always been gorgeous. Okay, here, you see, yo. my mom, you can understand why I'm gorgeous. Like, look Pat at that. Pat Wanda. Pat Wanda. Get that Pat Wanda. Look at that. I've always it's been gorgeous. That, <laughs> <it's like laughs> I just had slight self esteem. And then after a while growing up, I just stopped giving a fuck about things. And I just say, you know what? If I keep giving a fuck, I'm never gonna get pussy. So I stopped giving a fuck and got more confidence. I'm so dang. You became the Padawan. I'm so dang. <laughs> but I always been gorgeous. I just had low, low self esteem. Oh, but I beat that. My nigga. <laughs> that, that is a lot of life right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, <laughs> hell no. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. You know, well, but yeah. <laughs> this week's red pill major she saw it be decoded we have redefined what makes a high quality woman and that is basically a support system someone to be your rock someone to add to what you're building and someone who can be your support system when you, as you are building yourself um and we've also determined what the actual key to getting a high quality woman is and that is not necessarily determined by your looks your physique or your bank account is actually determined by your confidence in your said status and those things. So you can be the richest man and have the confidence or you can be the poorest man and have the confidence and either way you have 15 kids access a higher quality woman based off the fact that you're going to be able to give her all the things that checks her boxes, i.e. conversation, support, stability. Um, Like a lot of what women are talking about when they're saying support and stability even is the confidence. Like when you're confident in what your abilities are and what you can do and who you are in the world, it allows you to have and instill confidence in those around you, even in situations where it may look dire. The fact is like, you know, when the captain is steering the ship, even if you see that shit, the iceberg coming, if you got a real captain, it's like, yo, we got this shit. Don't worry about bad nailing this. Go ahead, do this. Like you gonna still roll with it just because he got so much confidence. You like well, shit. This motherfucker gotta have a plan. Let me roll with it. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So like, it, a lot of that is just the confidence. And so we've est- we've re-established, we've redefined, and yet another red pill matrix has been decoded, stamped. And now, man, uh, even though we kind of overlapped and agreed on several things, man, I think it's time to get into that part of the show where we start to go against the grain. Damn right. Let's take this conversation the other way and go against the grain, man. So this section of the conversation is where we each share opinions that might be opposite of the popular opinion. So I'm going first as normal. I hate the movie Love and Basketball. Can't stand it. Can't stand nothing about it. I hate that movie. People ask me all the time, why? I can't tell you why. I just don't like that damn movie. And I don't, I love don't know why. <laughs> damn, why? I really am like, why? <laughs> like, what? Wrong? I don't know why. Can't tell you why. I hate that movie. I can't tell you why. Can't sit through the movie. Can't why. Don't like it. Go like um, and my wife loves it. That, that's the sad thing. I hate it and she loves it. I hate that damn movie. Mm-mm-mm. With a passion. The only reason, 
The only reason why I would I tolerate or and said I like that movie is because it was a girl involved, and I was watching it with her that day. Then we went to the movie, and I pursued. That's about it. Other than that, I don't really care because you know if it don't have nothing blowing up or nobody punching somebody through a building or a bunch of gun shooting, I don't care about the movie. You never don't. <laughs> right on. <laughs> right. Damn. I, Damn. I, I'm against the grain. I guess I love the movie, but I I can I can understand. I, I get it. It, it ain't it, it ain't for everybody. But I still mm, it ain't. That's Gucci and Gold. Yeah, my second one. Z. My second against the grain. Some people might like it. Some people might not. But hey, I believe it should be. Now I feel like it should be mandatory for every adult to take either a free financial literacy class or a free parenting class once a year after you turn 21 for five years. It should be mandatory, monitored by the IRS, and once the class is completed, you get $1,000 each time. So the first time you go for your first class, after it's done, you get $1,000 to do whatever you want to do. And that's $5,000 over the course of five years, but you got to take that, that once a year course every time. And people ask why. Why I'm monitored by the IRS? Because they're the most diligent group of people in the government. <laughs> they, they, they do keep immaculate fucking records. Lord. <laughs> they going to get you. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Who is as taking them? Who, they, they ask what, who or what entity has taken down more gangsters than the FBI, the IRS. So, checks hey, that checks out. I believe Trump that would be good. Is, is dodging them now. Yeah. You said, I believe that would stimulate income, make more millionaires, and raise better children. You feel me? Because with continual financial literacy, as more new things come out and you get new education on it with that $1,000 at the end of your class, it gives you the chance to either reinvest in that or reinvest and what you already started the year before, what you already got going on. It gives you the educate it gives you the education with the parenting class to either use new techniques or improve on what you're already doing in your household. Or if you got an issue going on in your household with your kids, you can get educational or get tips and tricks on what to do in your household. Continue for five years. After that five years, you use the knowledge as you choose to do fit, but you get no more money after that and no more classes. It's just mandatory. So from twenty one to twenty six, you get them classes. I'm not, I just get those classes anyway when they establish this. That's what I want. I'm not mad at that. Like I, I don't think that's. A, it may be against the grain, I guess, in the bigger scheme of society, maybe. But I, it makes good sense. I think it'll strengthen families and all of that shit. Like, yeah, I, I personally think they should run. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> I personally think so too. This is a good idea, Pace. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start a political party or some shit, you know? Shit, I always did want to be. I did want to be alderman at one point. Hey, twenty twenty six. You did. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. That. I remember you saying that. Yes, I did. I think you, you know? even got an application or something. <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not a rap could do it. I know you can. Yeah, yeah. right. Shit. Uh-huh. But shit, that's my against the grain, which I got. Matt, you want to go? Uh, I got two on. Sure. I got, I got, I now got two of them. I didn't at first, but the more I thought about things that I got on my nerves, um, I looked throughout my history in, uh, in my life, and, and there's one thing that came to mind. Well, first, I'm going to say, I don't think social media is bad. I just think the humans on it make it bad. Like, Remember when social media first started? It was just college kids. It was just us and and motherfuckers in Norfolk State. It was just it was just it was just people in college or whatever. It only got crazy when we got all right. They start sneaking in celebrities first. Then it then then somehow as long as you got an email or whatever, those people when the people that figured out about email. They start right. sneaking in. And gradually and gradually, that's when it got worse. Is literally the people that say, 
social media is the devil that's on social media making it the devil. Because everything was cool before y'all motherfuckers got here. It's y'all. Y'all are great. All right? You. You, auntie. You. Not my auntie. I love my auntie. But I, yeah, some of that stuff I post, y'all shouldn't be seeing that. Anyway, but yeah, I think it's them. And then... um. I agree. It's kind of like social media is like guns. It's not the guns that's the problem. It's the people that got their hands on these guns. Yeah, we we had all these influencers and stuff. Yeah. Only the, I would say the only influencers we had was the college students that were trying to be party promoters. They were the first. They were the first because they started Bam. messaging all of us at once. Bam. <laughs> Bam. Check out this. You know what I'm saying? Fucking up but, the wall back when the wall was a thing. Mm-hmm. But really, it's just y'all, man. It's y'all people. That if you if you just hopped on social media within the I would say past 15 years, you just got not even that. I would say if you won't in here before 2010 or whatever, it, it's y'all. It's y'all. It's all of y'all. Checks out. You. Mm-hmm. Also, my next gets the grain um, is a, I got this from one of my childhood traumas. Um, the Care Bears, the Care Bears are evil. I don't care what anybody say. They're evil. They're fucking evil. Fuck with it. When I was, they're fucking Bro, evil. Don't man. be the, don't be confused. Now, and, I was a big um, fan of the Care Bear Cousins because I like the little lion. Hmm. The, but, uh, don't be misguided by their cutesiness or whatever. They evil or whatever. I had uh, uh, a Care my Bear mom, household in here, champ. My mom dropped me off at the Care Bear uh, uh, daycare when I was young and, and just left me there. And it was nothing there but Care Bears and Care Bear movies. I was so bored. It, and to this day. Bear, it, there, that's a thing. Yeah, it was a Care, care Bear daycare. The whole, I don't know if it was sponsored by everything in the room <laughs> that I was in. Was I didn't think that was a thing outside of and, their movies or the show. Oh, shit. And and they had a TV that just showed nothing but Care Bears. There was not, no action shit, no Thundercats, no nothing or whatever. Just Care Bears. And I, yeah. and I, was, I cried to sleep. Oh, man. Yeah, random you know, this is, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, random <laughs> Care Bears are evil. I don't care what anybody cried to sleep. Do y'all remember that show Zubali Zoo? Zubali Zoo? Yes. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, ben Vereen was on that shit. Yeah, yeah they got to that too. All yeah. them niggas were dressed up like animals and they used to be dancing and tap dancing and shit. And like, mm-hmm. Yeah, hell yeah. I no grown black shit. man should be dressed up like that at all. Hell yeah, man. That's my shit. No, nah, but I was that's like, my shit. You know, you're about two, three years old, nigga. That's the shit. Shit like Coco Melon years a day, man. You know, it, oh, Zubali Zoo on y'all. Like it was the shit. Like you had to shut up for thirty minutes. Magical wonders are waiting for you. Yep, that's my shit. That's just a random thought. I'm with you on that one. Um, just over here yeah. smoking. So, yeah. thanks for let for allowing me to um express my childhood dramas with y'all. You know, trauma. Hey, no, any that. Let that shit mm-hmm. off the chest, man. There ain't nothing wrong with it. I was um, kind of embarrassed about that, but yeah. I guess mine are a little more serious than uh, Care Bears, but um, all right, here it goes, guys. Here's a tears tape. Care Bears, scary as shit. I don't believe everyone can or even should make it. I agree. Um, I believe that there is a reason that some people should not make it to the top. Now, I do believe that things should be more of a meritocracy. And if you work harder than the next person, you should go up in the world. And I don't mean financially. Like, I actually believe in financial equity. I, I, I'm pretty much a socialist almost when it comes to finances. Like, I don't really think that should matter. But as far as your status in the world and whether people take you seriously or not, like, I think you should work for that. Like, you should be, if you're going to be a leader in a thought, a, a thought leader in an area, you should be, have put in the years of research and time and, and, and have put in the work that, and the evidence of, so that you can be that. If, if you are going to be revered as some athlete, then you should be the top of your, like, you should have put in the work. If you're going to be revered as some person that gives financial advice, you should be the person that has 
produce the most. You should be a warm, warm bucket. bucket. Yeah, give me somebody who you, the evidence says you're good at. <clears throat> so I still think you should be like, there should be like status in the world, but I don't think everybody should make it. I think some people should be lower tier in the world. And I don't mean as far as how they're treated by other people. I mean, just you're not going to be as cool as the next person. You're not going to be as great because you didn't work as hard. You didn't put in the same hours. Like, it, like everybody can't be the top. Just the people I, I that say say everybody say can't say be say number it. one. Like, I don't believe in this participation uh, trophy, like, <clears throat> world we're becoming where because you showed up, you won. No. If you showed up and then you were outworked everybody else in the class, yes, you won. You the valedictorian. If you showed the fuck up and slept every day, then no, nigga, you don't get to get the goddamn <coughs> uh, special field trip for the top, for the top, uh, gr- the top fifty percent of the class that made good grades. Or no, nigga, no. If, if you got kicked out of class every day, no, you can't go on on this one. You didn't earn that. Sit your ass in the back of the class again the day where everybody else out on the bus eating ice cream and shit, and you sit your head in the back of the class and keep fucking up and going to sleep. That's the work you put in. And I think that the, the world needs to be that. If you didn't go to practice and you come to the game and you've been a bench warmer, no, you is not going to get the same trophy that the MVP going to get. That motherfucker played his ass off, showed up to practice every time, outworked everybody, listened to the coach, went home, studied, played. Like, he deserved to get the big trophy. Now, you take your little ass participation trophy and carry your ass home. <laughs> like that. And That's a nice trophy. To work like that. Like this. Like, I don't, I have realistic expectations. I did not go to school as long as a doctor did to do the job that the doctor does or have a job that even does the gravity. Like, I'm not saving nobody life today. I didn't go to school that long. I don't want to go to school that long. So I don't expect to make the same salary as this motherfucker that is out here literally researching to like do the next surgery that allows conjoined twins to live a better life or to allow the next person to have an easier way to get a lung transplant. Like I didn't do that work and put in the miles. I don't deserve to get the same salary. Get that nigga the money because he did that. I'm going to take the money that I did because that's the work I put in. Like I, I really don't believe everybody can or even should make it. I really think that this participation trophy also is for the birds. And thank you for letting me rant on that for you. Okay. I don't mind because I like my participation trophy. And kind of <laughs> in that restrictive process, man. And I know this might be the one that get me uh all right. Cancel chairs, y'all. I do <laughs> not believe that everyone should have children or should have the ability to have children. I believe there should oh, be you are Hitler. And I believe that <laughs> there should be some mental competencies and some type of responsibility that you have evidence of. Like there should be like a period, like a probationary period as you become an adult that says, okay, I can sustain myself and actually be successful at taking care of me before you are allowed to take care of an entire other human being. And I think that should be extended not only to just um, biological births, but also like adoptions and foster children. Like before you're allowed to take care of another human being, you should have a vetting process of some sort where you checked off some type of responsibility boxes that says you are responsible enough and mentally capable of and well enough to actually take care of this other human being. Because I think otherwise you just have a bunch of traumatized children that end up being more fucked up parents. And then it just be, it's the cycle. <laughs> like at some point, we need some type of regulation on like who's going to be the parent. Are you like actually a per- like, and that don't mean that you gotta like have a certain political viewpoint or something like you that, but are you able to actually like maintain and take care of yourself? Have you shown yourself to be a responsible adult in society? That don't mean like what you do in private, but your actual behaviors in public and how they affect the world around you. Cause that's literally all that matters in the world. Like your political viewpoint, all that shit. Like nigga, are you fucking with people? Are you inf- infringing on somebody else's right to do what they doing? That's really all that matters. So like you can believe what you want to believe, your religion don't matter, all that shit don't matter. 
have a vetting process on are you a responsible, capable human being in society? And then if you are, yes. If no, snip, snip, cut, cut, whatever process needs to be had, but you are not, you're deemed inviolable and yeah. And maybe you can, you know, every few years you can re-up on the process and like, you know, show new evidence and resubmit your paperwork and, you know, it's like a driver's license. Like I, I couldn't, I, I didn't study. Let me go back and get my life together. And then you, oh, hey, you grown. Come on. You know what I mean? But yeah. I can use my penis now. Yes. I got my penis license back. Those are my against the grains, man. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, look, man. I, look, I agree, Fuck up, man. man. Fight, fight me, motherfucker. I, you disagree. I agree. Give me the Put it in so the comment right now. Like PL. Like. Go ahead. I agree. Give me that test so I can fail it right now. So I don't have to get no responsibilities I can't afford right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can fail that jump right now. Like for a draft you. dodger trying to fail them tests over. Uh, uh, crazy as hell, nigga. Yeah, let me. Yeah, when I get my give me a couple of more raises, I can get my penis license back and start making making humans. Shit. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Making humans. Shit. I'm done. <laughs> nigga, you said, you, you, said you said they can't. You said they can't use nothing. I ain't calling that, that the old jail cell. <laughs> I want ready, man. Mm-hmm. And you going? You going to get your P license, man? Yeah, man. I'm got P license. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been studying license. real hard for my test, man. I'm ready. I got my evidence. I got my look, portfolio here, Sean. Look, look at me, man. I'm a father. Look, look, look at this. You driver. Your driver's license expires in three months. Your penis. <laughs> it says where your no, yo, where you should have to re up. Like, it should be an ongoing thing where, like, every like there's a track record constantly kept, and like you know, get the hours. Who, whatever agency can manage that type of thing with, like, you're constantly having to submit, and they're constantly like reviewing your job history. Like, have you been gainfully employed? Are you constantly switching jobs? Are you constantly putting your family into jeopardy by your 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 management decisions. Are you making decisions that are traumatic to the child? Are you becoming abusive? Are you picking up addictions that are harming your family? Like all of that shit should play. And every year you're like you, you know, you got to re-register your car, make sure the car's still up to par. Like, are you still being fit to your family? And if not, then let's go ahead and cut and this trauma you- now instead of letting that continue on and continue on. Let's go ahead and just get your family into a safer place. And you and have you taken faces you financial home. and parenting classes. There you go. There and you it, go. There you go. And you got five years and you got to reapply. And then if you do, you can go head back to your family and continue on. If not, you can still see them like we ain't gonna cut complete ties, but you are no longer in management of those families, and we're gonna put somebody who's a responsible adult in charge. He gave you your penis license, you can go out there and 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 parent and everything <laughs> and and Somewhere the, upper, the, land, and the it's, responsible it's party can be too. a family member that has their license. You know, it can be a responsible vagina or penis license holder in your family. <laughs> it just has to be, it can't be you no more. You know, so auntie, cousin, uncle that, that is doing well and he's managing his family well, go ahead and let, uh, yeah, go ahead and let your baby go live with the cousins. You can still see them and everything, you know, but you're not making the decisions that are going to directly impact these babies' lives no more and add more trauma to the situation. Mm-hmm. Keep your genitalia license in the in the pocket. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. That's how I it should help your credit. Somehow this all this all this should help your credit some type of way. So you can get a house for these kids. Some type of way. Um and kind of going along, going into the next thing. Um my my topic for tonight for real. I don't know. I, it, it's not a long one, but I did just want to get y'all thoughts on this. Uh, I was watching um, Comedy High News, and they had a report where they were saying, like, Steve Harvey basically said that um, because of cancel culture, he's literally, that's why he doesn't do stand up anymore. And he's like, you know, maybe when he's done with his TV career or et cetera, you know, he might be back to it, but he was like, he just got too much to lose right now. Um, and he doesn't want to also have to censor himself. Um, I guess my question for the group is just kind of seeing what y'all think. Like, if y'all were in this position, would you put off your passion to maintain your success? If so, what are the reasons? If not, what are the reasons? And like, is success or your freedom of public display more important to you or why? 
Oh. Uh, yeah, you go first. You go Well, um, I I was I'm looking at it, Steve. At um, all right, he's older now. He don't move around like he used to. So for him, it might work for him because you know, like if he was younger and he still had years ahead of him, then I'll be like, all right, now you sound more like a slave than anything. But Steve also has built a whole career in these wholesome household companies or whatever. So he kind of built his own prison, so to speak. Um, and if you ever watched his, his like stand up, it is the complete, almost complete opposite of the shows you naturally see him on nowadays or whatever. It's a lot more cussing. Yeah, a lot more cussing. It really that's all it is is a lot more cussing. I really don't think he's that edgy or whatever. He just yeah yeah. He just make facial expressions and it's a lot more cousins and he talks about your crazy cousin and uncle and drunk one day and they lost their job, something like that. Right. You know. But I guess it all depends on on the situation or whatever. I would hate. I would hate to be in a corner where like I can't call that success that all right yeah I got all my financials in the play but I can't do nothing yeah that's the that's the yeah. that's the equivalent of being in the mob and want to get out of the mob like somewhat like every time I the, get out they pull me back in streets is watching yeah like it's it kind of, hmm, how to say, it, it's kind of like a trap, like like you double-edged sword or whatever, like you get enticed and, and tempted into thinking it's success until you get to a point where, all right, this, I have a lot of accolades, but it don't feel like freedom and success or whatever, probably because it's not really that much freedom in it or whatever. Right. Like a lot of these successful right. celebrities, they don't really got the much freedom as you think they do. They just, no, you just see them on nice vacation. Okay. <clears throat> so, but yeah, that's my rant. <laughs> um, I feel that's like situational. Um, if you're in the place to provide for your family on a long term basis, I say go ahead and choose your passion. But if you're in a place where you got to continuously provide for family, and you are that brilliant winner, you got to choose success. Because in most cases, um, the, that one person who becomes successful, either they become that branch for everyone in their family and they're supporting everybody. So a sudden change just for passion, where your revenue may not be coming in, that's a sudden change for everybody. Yeah. Where if, on the other hand, if it's just you, you feel me? And you're like, well, shit, if I, if I go for this and go for what I love, I may be risking this, but hey, I can live with it. It's not affecting anybody else. It, it's just for me, and I'm going for what I love. And, and in some circumstances, I see that when you have that decision where it's choosing what you love or choosing who you love, you feel me? You choose who you love, um, especially when you have a responsibility to that person or to those people. Um, in a situation where you got kids and you become successful and your success allows you to do for your kids and all those things you you say you want to do when you got that point. But you realize at some point, I'm not happy doing this no more, but what I'm doing is still providing a lifestyle and still providing for my kids. But if I go change to what I'm going to be happy doing, I'm not going to be able to do this no more. Can I do that to my kids? Right. That's a decision. You feel me? But it's totally situational. So, me yeah. personally, I, I would choose. Me personally, I would choose success just because, like I said, I got people who depend on me. So, I'm gonna choose success. What I'm happy doing is making it. it, it I rather choose me being happy, seeing them happy, than me being happy, just doing something. You feel me? Right. I think uh, I definitely passion has changed. 
I'm sorry, go ahead. I think it's passion is strange. What I'm passionate about today may what may not be what I'm passionate about ten years from now. You know, I took that change chance for passion and lost all that bread. So Yeah, that's true. Um, I think it definitely dep- I I guess I look at it two different ways when I uh first heard it. So I kinda like on the personal level for me, I think it depends on where I'm at in life. Like where I'm at now in life, yeah, I could probably say like if I had something that I was so pressed to say or do that I couldn't do it and still do what I'm doing now, then yeah, I could choose that. But I also don't know that I'm that edgy in my life that I got that much that I'm trying to say or do that I can't keep doing what I'm doing now and still do all of the stuff I'm passionate about. Um, But me personally, I'm also in a place like where I have things set up to where, like, if I did need to make that move, I could do so. So I think it depends on where you at personally. But I think in his particular case, it's interesting. Because when I first looked at it and I first heard him say it or whatever, I was thinking of, like, man, you rich as fuck. Your family is straight Mm -hmm. upon straight upon straight upon straight if you quit tomorrow. And if you really wanted to do the stand-up thing, like, you can go out and say what you want to say, and if they canceled you, like, your family ain't going to get hurt. But then I thought about, like, the bigger picture, and uh, Facebook was kind of talk, kind of hit on him when he was saying, like, you know, your brand is so big, it begins to be, like, other people's livelihood are dependent upon that. Like, I forget that he, like, like his shows are also host, like, producers, production assistants, uh, videographers, all them people that work on the shows also are dependent on him showing up to keep doing the show. So if he ain't got a replacement that's going to keep the show going, then they get fucked. Shit like that. Yeah. So I, I, when I think about it like that, that make more sense. Like, you might want to do your passion, but at the same time, when you have that level of responsibility, sometimes you might have to delay that shit just to make sure, like, you at least got a plan in place for those people that you've now taken responsibility for. So I get it both ways. I, I definitely think, I yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's all. But I, I yeah. I think I, I just kind of agree with both of y'all. It's definitely individual mm-hmm. and kind of where you're at as far as like in life and who's res- who you responsible for and kind of like what you're really saying. Like, I, I think for Steve, it, it threw me off more than anything. Like kind of what you said, uh, Pat, like he's not that over the top edge. Like I've never heard him say anything that I can think of that would like get mm-hmm. him canceled. Like he curses a lot, but I don't know that these days that can necessarily disqualify you from still being able to do your family stuff on a family platform as long as you keep your curse and stuff where it can be like adults only type if you do like netflix or somewhere kids parents have the option to kind of control it so i i i I really was confused when he said it like if somebody else said it that like actually be saying some wild shit i'd have been like oh all right but i think that also was kind of what threw me but yeah that was my take I think Steve think he's a little bit more edgier than he actually is with the stand up. Yeah. Think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, man, that was all the 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 fuckery I had, man. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there and, and see what y'all thought about it. Um but I do have two fuckeries tonight on our next topic because I looked at the clock. It has confirmed that I am correct. I also looked at my phone to make sure it is confirmed that I'm correct. It's about that time. What the, oh, yes. It is. It is. It is time. Nigga, it's time for the good and fuckery. Yeah, episode 61. 61. Uh, DeMarco, DeMarco. Good for it is episode it's 61, right? It's 30 times 2 plus 1, right? Yes. Okay. Episode oh, 61. Time. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Man, why did my brain fart like that on some basic math? God damn. I was like, yes. Hold on. What? Yeah, yes. 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 That checked out. Okay. Hey, I ain't going to give you too much like, extra uh, exponents on my math. Guys. My math going to be real simple if I throw that out because I ain't trying to mess it up either. But uh, episode 61, good and fuckery, y'all. And uh, I thought since we were going to, we, we talked about Steve Harvey. Um, oh, well shit, did I have a natural some... segue and didn't know it? Yeah, we go. We might as well get right into the fucker with Steve Harvey. You know, he got hey. a judge show. He has a judge show called Judge Steve 
Harvey. It already came out. It was like uh, January 4th, and like I just found out about it. Shit? Yes, yes. Oh wow. Yes, this is oh, this is the caption. That shit gonna be Steve funny. Ha- <clears throat> Steve Harvey employs his own life experiences and some good old common sense as he expands his resume by taking on the role of judge and jury in the courtroom. Oh, this is <laughs> It's going to be just I like every other show you. you got out. A bunch of him making weird facial expressions and going. Right on brand. I got, I got right one, one for you. Mm-hmm. You got another judge show for you. Judge Chrissy Teigen. I've, I've seen that. I, she got I a show I've for heard her. About it. Yes, Judge Chrissy. Hold on. No, 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 no. Like you, you, are you like trolling right now? Or like she actually has a show that's coming out? What? I'm dead ass. What? Judge Chrissy Teigen? Wait a minute. All right. Well, can I'm I get a can this. I get a judge show too? Then shit. I got much since they got. <laughs> Fuck. What kind of shit is this? Yeah, Chrissy, Chrissy. Court. Rulings on Chrissy Teigen's judge show are actually legally binding. Oh wow. Wow. <laughs> he ain't judging comedians, and she ain't judging models. I don't really know that I. Take them as an expert on anything outside of those two arenas for themselves. Oh, uh, they they already um what with um Steve Harvey he he got like two episodes already because it started <laughs> in January fourth. He um yeah two episodes it's on ABC. They just give me everybody judge shows man. Give me one too. Exactly. <laughs> Be judging these. Influences on IG, like no. Can we get uh? Can we get partners court? (laughs) (laughs) I I think we make good judges. God damn it! Uh, Let me black rope. I don't give a damn. I used to be be in the court. Let me to smoke during the court. Am I? Well, it's our courtroom, you know. Fuck it. About to draw tears in the in the court. Um, robe, <laughs> nigga. Everybody built. Everybody. <laughs> All jump. Guilty. Next. Next case. Guilt. Yeah. Bitch. Guilty. Next. Get everybody guilty. This whole damn court is out of order. Guilty. <laughs> you out of order. You out of order. Everybody going to jail. I don't like your face. <laughs> Damn, my point is going to jail. And partner jail, you're going to have to go in there and do some old crazy shit, some old weirdo shit. Like, you're going to have to do some fear factor shit to get out. Yeah. Stand right here with this apple on top of your head while Face tries out this new AK-47. Oh, shit. No, I ain't going to. Oh, no. That's a snuff there. Damn. We're going to jail there, man. Hey. Gotta eat, so they be eating all like weird shit. Yeah, I was thinking like you know you gonna eat some like thousand year old pudding or you know some crazy shit like that mm-hmm. or you know you gotta Just fermented donkey balls. You gotta you gotta go through some type of obstacle course or something to certain. Nigga, did you say fermented? <laughs> Hold on, what? Yeah, fermented fermented donkey balls. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor file. The next one we have to be about the game. Coach, get your players under control. <laughs> That's a delicacy. The delicacy is some. No, it is not. It is not delicate. No <laughs> delicacy. Nowhere. No. Way. Nobody. Right. Like, oh, nigga, this some king shit right here. You ain't, you ain't live till you had these donkey ball. No, no, they are not. No, nigga, no. <laughs> nigga, no. Nigga, no, they is not. <laughs> oh, my no, no, sir. Oh, my have some dumb motherfucker out there. Man, y'all don't even know, man. I'm on that ball and shit, man. Y'all ain't had them for a minute, dog. Ball, man. That's how you know when you play, man. Fuck that caviar, nigga. Get these balls. That is man. not on P. Fuck out of here, man. That is, Got- that is not on P. No. <laughs> nigga, no. Well, uh... Well, uh, from from capital punishment to 
random vigilantism. Uh, the new uh, Moon Knight trailer came out on Disney Plus finally. Uh, I don't know I if y'all are familiar with him. Trailer. I've seen, I'm starting to see all of the little recaps. So now I got, I, I got to see this. Because Moon Knight, I fuck with him. I, I don't know a lot about his character in the comics, but I fuck with that nigga on the video game. Like every video game that has featured him, he's been one of the better characters. So, uh, Moon Knight is is crazy. He got multiple personality disorder. One of those personalities, Mark Spector, um, and uh, I, I from the trailer, it looks like it's gonna be him fighting himself basically while he's fighting some outside force basically and it looks it looks pretty well, cool so far him fighting him while he's fighting another person yeah because he has okay. these moments so he's gonna whip everybody else ass and his own ass yeah he has these moments mm -hmm. where oh me uses, i want to see it he uses different personalities uh for his mission basically like and he literally turns into that person or whatever so the person mm -hmm that you first see in the trailer, they got the regular job at the museum and everything, that might not actually be the real him. If they're going off of the, the book, the comic book itself, uh, Moon Knight is literally multiple personalities. And he's also possessed by uh, an Egyptian moon god named Khonshu. So now he's fighting that, and all the personalities in his head, along with whatever random villain, street level villain they give Moon Knight. So what powers he got that make him like? <clears throat> what is his powers other than being crazy and shit? Um, Cause I'm just I'm shit. just imagining this mental <clears throat> thing rolling the streets, beating the fuck out random random criminals. Like, That's what it oh, is, man, motherfucker. Hey, Larry, you got one. <laughs> and then the criminals look around like. Whoa. <laughs> well, oh, this as, motherfucker, nigga! No, <laughs> this is crazy, nigga. As Mark, personal, well, it's like it's like all his personalities got a different, uh, I would say, ability. And Mark Spector is like a mercenary, so he got that hand-to-hand -hand combat training and stuff like that. Okay, so he like and a then, type shit. Like he just can fight. Yeah, with but. There's also the aspects of uh, the Egyptian Khonshu God. So um, in the comic books, he was left for dead. Mark Spector was left for dead on a mission or whatever. And he was left for dead on this Egyptian God statue. So the Egyptian God came to him and was like, if you submit to me, I'll bring you back to life and you'll be stronger. So he came back and now he's the Moon Knight. Uh, <clears throat> and he protects people that walk through the night, basically. So he's just like that's super a, strong. Or yeah, like he could be power. Like, what can he do? That that's the thing. Cool. See, that's the thing with with it. It's like it's kind of like the way they write it. The the powers differ or whatever according to the story. It's, it's pretty much. So he kind of just got whatever powers needed. Got it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like, like a green lantern, but without having to have a <laughs> ring. You just kind of, well, if the yeah. story calls for me to be able to shoot some shit out of my hands, well, the moon mm. will do it. It just may, it, at, one, at some point of time, he might just get some kind of random Egyptian god power up and then be able to whip somebody's ass, like whip a whole bunch of people's ass at one time. I like it. So I was malleable to the situation. Whatever I need, I got it. I like it. He's a Swiss He's Army like knight for the new Avengers. Shit. And he crazy as fuck. Psycho, he already got me sold. Psycho like, <laughs> Punisher Batman. That's what he is. A psycho I'm still Punisher this nigga walking around. <laughs> and so how does Larry play into this? Where does Larry come in? Larry? Yeah, um, the, the other one. The other him. Oh, um. You oh, know, when he pull up on the dude, he like, come on, Larry, we got one. So when does Larry, like, what does Larry do? <laughs> I got Spectre, I got the Moon Knight. What do what Larry or, or what the what the what the god name Kunsom come say it? Oh, Kanchu. Kanchu. We got, we got Spectre. <laughs> but what Larry right. doing while all this going on? What he, is, he you, just, is he just I thought you found out he got no power. He just found out Lawrence Fishburne was in this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no. Oh Larry, man, the other guy. But Kanchu come in and, and fuck around with 
Mark Spector's head from time to time oh, and say, hey, you. Khonshu, who the other guy though? Because I heard you said like he's fighting like himself, like, a, like you said he got multiple. Uh, so I'm thinking like, this... is it somebody else or is it just like it's this demon that's inside his head, kind of like Venom, where it's like, I'm, yeah, I'm a normal guy, like but it's this crazy motherfucker in me that pop out from time to time and be like, come on, we got to go kill these niggas. Well, he got a, he has a lot. <laughs> He has a lot of personalities in his head, a lot to, a, a whole lot to keep up with. Pretty much, oh, so it's, it's a, a lot, lot of, of person. Yeah, it's, it's a like lot Larry of Larry and, and then Ray Ray and Tony and then Felicia yeah. and, and Brandon yeah. and Jonathan yeah. and Jack and J John Jacob Jingle Hammerschmidt up there. Okay. Yeah. And oh, I'm going. To, to I don't know out. when. When is this? Is this a movie or a show? Because I want to see it either it's way. It's supposed I to come out in so March. Excited. It's, it comes out in March. Or what whatever. is it? So, like, the, it's, a it's a show. show. Or a movie. Oh, oh, yeah. It's a show. It's yeah. a show. So, it's like the whole time he's trying to figure out, all right, is this Conchu talking to me? Is this some random personality in my head trying to take him? Because he has... Is it uh, uh, Is it Larry? Because this is the thing. He has a job during the day, and then he usually wakes up still tired because one of his personalities done took his body and then went out. Oh, so when, so when, so if Larry take over, Mark don't know what's going on. If Mark take over, he don't know nothing. Don't know what's going on. Country take over, then the other two don't know what's going on. So it's like whoever's mm -hmm. in charge, everybody else in a coma for that time. So they wake up like, how the fuck did I get mm -hmm. here? Yep. Is this, what is this on it's, my brain? Uh, Oh shit, this shit about to be. Oh, I'm you, nigga. You got a crazy dude, an Egyptian god, and a fucking Punisher type nigga, and they all in one character. You got me sold, nigga. I'm, I ain't seen the trailer yet, and I'm hyped. Shit. And the guy that oh, plays him like, is Apocalypse. And Larry. I'm ready. And the guy that plays him is Apocalypse and, and that X Men Apocalypse movie. So that was him. Am I, am I out of bounds, I, I saw your face. I was did, I, did I say something crazy? No, he said some about apocalypse, and I was like, "Is apocalypse?" I'm thinking apocalypse in this damn movie too. God damn! And he was like, "Nah, he played him." Like, oh, okay. That'll be a cool ass yeah. way to bring in mutants. Oh. You just come straight with the bad, mother, the baddest one of all. Oh, all right, let's yeah. go a bigger level right off the jump. My the do um do Oscar Isaac? He he done a lot in Marvel. Well, he, apocalypse. He's also um he uh he's a Spider Man in the new Spider Man animated movie. Uh, the the Spider Man he's like the futuristic Spider Man. Oh, and there's a new one coming out, a new Spider Verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and new into the uh, into the uh, Spider Verse with Miles or whatever. And if you've I seen the trailer, they, I'm, I'm down for it. Yeah, in the trailer, um, in comic books they had these series called 2099. They had Spider Man 2099, and they were like the the futuristic cyberpunk versions of the character. So they had. They had Spider Man. They had Punisher 2099. Um, they had Doom 2099 and X Men 2099. But I really like the Spider Man 2099 because they it it looked like Fifth Element cyberpunk stuff. I think I got like the first edition somewhere. But yeah, he also plays that dude um, in the next uh, Spider Verse cartoon, pretty much. And this, uh, well, he's this busy. This Spider Man 2099, this is separate from that, uh, that like cyberpunk robot, like the the girl that had the robot that was a Spider Man in the last one, but she wasn't like, like she had like the little robot. That yeah, that's separate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Who, who, All of those. Which Spider Man? Who was that? The Spider Man from 2099? No, the girl. Like what? What? Oh. What year is she from? Because that was some crazy shit too. She. But this is the thing with Spider Man. There's so many. All right, the Spider Verse is basically all the Spider Man gimmicks putting in in this multiversal thing, pretty much. So if you ever like, um, back in the day in Japan, they had like a Spider Man show, and the shit was like an old Power Rangers show. Pretty much, Spider Man had his own robot and everything. And those Spider Verse comic books, they they find that Spider Man. There's a British Spider Man. There's a assassin Spider Man. It's a so any Spider, -Man. Spider Man. Any Spider Man that's been in the comics ever before. Any Spider Man mm -hmm. iteration that was like, oh, we should have used this, or we used this in a one off, and we're gonna bring it back. Mm -hmm. All of those are separate Spider Man. 
who mm-hmm. have their own is there, is there an alcoholic Spider-Man? I'm pretty sure it is. This is Give me the talk Spider-Man. 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 There's a spot. Oh, there's an asshole Spider-Man like Tony Stark's. They got armor. It's all kinds of the forearm Spider-Man. I want know, a Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Like fucking up. He go to shoot the first web and he forget to actually, to actually shoot that shit. So he just follows. <laughs> he waking up literally the cars and shit because he was, he was Spider-Man. That... <laughs> Nigga, the... literally any Spider-Man that you've <laughs> ever seen is in the to the top yeah. of a water tower. Literally. I forgot. <laughs> Too much yak. This shit like 25. <laughs> you know, I do got a comic book with Wolverine and, and Spider-Man in a bar. And, and they go into a bar fight. It was Wolverine's birthday and Spider-Man thought Wolverine thought of Wolverine as a superhero and Wolverine was like, you know what? Here's the reviews of I this, like, like the recaps of these. Like, this is your content right here. These crazy ass stories that like nobody's <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, let's let's get drunk, Spider Man, and we'll ring uh, together for a story. Like, I don't know about this. You oh, can have yeah, a fire I, side I, I, chat. I you can have a fire side chat with that, and you just sit there <laughs> and read <laughs> like we like back in the day. They used to have them little Jones on the radio. Where everybody get rid of the radio and listen to the story. And you tell us about this shit because I damn sure I ain't never heard of no drunk ass Spider Man hanging out with Wolverine at the bar. I can only imagine the, the, the <laughs> shit they about to get into after. It, that. it was. It was funny because like, Wolverine has a human know what factor. Get into after the bar, so I know what they about to do. Act a fool. You know how um, Wolverine has the healing factor, right? So it's funny because each panel is like one panel he's drunk, then the next panel he's sober, then the immediately next panel he's drunk again. <laughs> next panel he's sober so i he I needs like, that. A, I was like oh, to just keep him drunk all the time if he wants to actually stay inebriated the entire night mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think they actually did that one time i think they actually, i'm gonna look that up look her, anyway, I, I think they i think they made that joke one time and actually <laughs> did that you what, he said something. Lit, but i know that shit burn going in yeah exactly you better he be heal me to take that shit Fuck. yeah he, he can heal he can hear um so from one comic book cycle to another um william defoe said in the interview that he had this idea for him playing the joker and i that sparked in my head that i've always said that william defoe should be the joker the way he plays green goblin makes me feel gives me that joker vibe Yeah, I'm not mad at that. I'm not I'm like, I'm like even if even if he changed the facial features of it a little bit to fit his face, like I he he has that uh he already has the face man. I feel like it joker like that. Mm. I'm I'm really I'm lucid but crazy at the same time. Like I'm nutty as fuck and ain't no telling I don't even know what I'm gonna do next, but I'm also smart as a bitch. So it mm-hmm. is kind of like he can play that kind of character. Feel, as well. Yeah, I can see that. To me, to to me, when he was playing Green Goblin, he was playing a Joker. To me, like I'm not, I'm not asked, that. yeah, that I, I, laugh. I, I see that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I I I saw that, and I was like, you know what? That's what I've been saying. It's the same feeling I had when I said before the X Men movies came out and really got into x-men i was like patrick stewart is going to be professor x mark my words except that we didn't have social media back then so nobody was there to see (laughs) yeah almost felt like they made that character off of patrick stewart yeah that's that's and i don't think that's fine because x-men came out in 63 so yeah um Next crazy thing on the list that has nothing to do with the other shit that I was just talking about. Uh, you know, China has its own sun. You know, Japan is the land of the rising sun. China is the land of the one trillion dollar artificial sun fusion reactor that just got five times hotter than the sun. And no one's talking about it. China. 
And um, now, we I have all in all, all like messing around with China. We keep sleeping on them, and they keep doing this crazy ass shit. Hella human rights violations, but them motherfuckers, when they come to this tech shit, they are, they gonna end up enslaved. Between them, world, them and Japan. Where the population of robots gonna have us all plugged into the matrix. Between between them and Japan, man, I swear, man, the aliens, I don't know. <laughs> Please don't let Sophia don't know. to nowhere near this fucking sun. <laughs> Do not let Sophia near this fucking sun, people. Asian community, you know what, stand with me. Send word. Do nope. not let you, Sophia get to this fucking sun. That is not going to be good for the human population. I'm telling y'all now. Bitch already trying to have Sophia some fucking lives. robot babies. The next thing is all of them fucking around finding a way to have little suns in their chest. And the next thing you know, we got a, a a whole fleet of fucking Ultrons running around kicking our ass. You, um, you know where Sophia lives, right? Saudi Arabia. That's right near the beach. Beside China and Russia on the same landmass, the fucking axis of evil on different continents. Fuck you, Putin, as the British that be the 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 little robots that nanobots that can reproduce. Whatever. Put that all together, and you got yourself a super villain. That's why it fits with all the other comic books. Super shit, but... conglomerate, nigga. That's like all of the worst cunt. The, the the most like <laughs> evil regimes over the years, like, hey, we got you. You need a beheading. <laughs> we got robots for that. We got an app for that. <laughs> like these niggas is gonna fuck us up. <laughs> and we got people in our government that keep poking the damn bear. Oh. Well, the the one thing about it is she's in Saudi Arabia, and if she got to go anywhere past Afghanistan, she got to deal with the Taliban. You know how the Taliban already feel about women. I don't know how they feel about artificial women, but yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. What? Yo, that's a fucking bar. That was quick. <laughs> Just saying, you know, <laughs> if you gotta go to Af- go past Afghanistan, but they say Afghanistan is like the yeah. middle of everything. Like everything yeah. is is like the five points of the Middle East and whatnot. So if she had to go to China and got to go through Afghanistan, man, she got a lot of fighting. She got to fight. So I don't know. I don't know. Good I don't know. I'm done with you. <laughs> I am done. But if you think that's funny, um, Kendrick Lamar and Dave Free to produce a live action comedy film alongside South Park creators. That was my next thing. Who the fuck is Dave Free? I don't know, but it's probably one of Kendrick Lamar's <laughs> random PG Lang friends. <laughs> Out of all that dude, that you said, I don't know why my brain gravitated to that particular piece. But like, who is this guy? All right. I like the South Park creators. The South Park is my shit, so... Yep. It tells me at least it's gonna be from, from clever. Matt Stone and Trey Parker. Yep. I'll roll with it. Oh. Uh, roll. It says oh. it says it follows a black man <laughs> interning as a slave reenactor at a at a history museum where he discovers his white girlfriend's ancestors once once owned his family. His ancestors. Oh, okay. Yep. Gotcha. Um, might be entertaining. That, you know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like one of them random, crazy Lakeith Stanfield movies or whatever, where he's like at a call center and then randomly everybody start turning into horses and shit. Yeah, that was a good fucking movie. It that was a movie. The name of it. That was a good damn movie, yo. Him and Tessa. Um, was a good damn movie. um it, it was something very polite. What was it? I gotta say, I, guess I always forget the name yeah, it was of it. Like, Excuse me for interrupting. Something like that. Oh, well, something shit like y'all. Yeah. You on? You on the right path? Yeah. You 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 know I'm what I'm talking about? It. Yeah. No, I don't find move. it because I. Sorry to bother you. Yes. That's it. Was name. weird. Sorry, but, but if you yeah. take your trip with them, it's definitely. It, I liked it. I enjoyed it. It's worth, it's worth taking. You said what? It's a trip worth taking. 
Yeah. yeah it was, that shit was crazy. That motherfucker, uh, what's that dude name? He played um, in Power. And wasn't he, wasn't the dude with the mustache in the Derby, the guy from Power? Or whatever in that movie? I don't know. I don't get that. But, <laughs> yeah, on, on Sorry, Sorry to Bother Me, right? On Sorry to Bother Me, uh, mm-hmm. Lakeith was going up in the, um, basically going up in the company. And one of the uh, main dudes that was helping him get up there was this like black dude that was always gotcha. wearing this derby and he, had that weird mustache. I know you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I think you might be right, but I'm not. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, that, 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 that was ghost, right? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I thought so. What mm-hmm. well, Amari Howard? Yeah, yeah I, that, I knew it was something with an O. <laughs> yep. Okay. But uh. So, and uh, since we in the movie lane, pretty much, oh, um, the the death of Sidney Poitier uh, brought up that for the past 93 years of the Academy Awards, it's only been four Black men that have won Best Actor. That's Sidney Poitier, that's Denzel yeah. Washington, that's yeah. Jamie Foxx, and I believe that was Forrest Whitaker. In 93 years, in the past 93 fucking years. And I know for a fact that it's been a lot of niggas born in that time, <laughs> in the past 93 years. We Not got, all of them were actors. <laughs> we got that one you know. problem, though, bro. We got that, um, mm-hmm. that issue of not... Like having like it gotta be one black man at a time type shit that we be struggling. Yeah, with. yeah. yeah. I, I think that yeah, we we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. I think that everybody got, it's always got to be that big dog. But yeah, there's a lot of people that should have won shit along the way outside of them dudes though for sure. Damn, you ain't check. Oh uh-huh. heck yeah, it's a, it's a travesty. Samuel yeah, Jackson yeah. ain't got one yet. Yeah. That man could literally be anything. He could be a kilt wearing drug dealer, a Jedi Knight, a freaking shield agent. No, that's real. A, a, a hit man. I'm a, <laughs> a man. <laughs> he is amazing on, on some real deal shit. Like he could be anything. Anything. He has range. Yeah. Man. Hell yeah. I don't know who got more range, him or Will Smith. Mr. Motherfucker. I'm just saying. Mm. That's tough. I it's feel right, like Will, Will do, but like, cause Will got more of that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say Will. That high level action. I'm gonna say Will. Star shit. I'm gonna say Will. Will on um, that six <laughs> degrees of separation. I don't think um, Samuel would have did a part like that. No, true. 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 That was a crazy ass part. <clears throat> um, only thing that Will Smith has not done is horror. That's true too, yeah. and I don't think that goes with his plan. I, don't, I can't see him doing horror. I feel like he would be. I can't either. I feel like he would end up either coming across as like too stiff or something, or it would just be too funny with him being. <laughs> I I couldn't see it. Like I feel like he'd be like making people laugh as like. Either that Damn. or be too serious. It's another, like, that's another ghost. Damn. Like, and, you know, like doing that, like that Fresh Prince type shit. It, it'll just like throw off the scene with the, like where you're supposed to be scared, but like you're just laughing at Will Smith being Will Smith. Like, yeah. The closest we will get to that. Is I can I cry with him, but I got Will Smith around. I ain't going to be scared. I'm just going to be laughing at everything because I feel like he's going <clears> to <throat> make this the situation feel better. Like, yeah, it's Will Smith, guys. Thank you. I can cry like, with you, but I can't be scared with you. Yeah, and like I just feel like he would just have everybody getting jiggy with it and shit. It's gonna be a dance montage. <laughs> he got a little song for the oh them ghosts are coming. Oh, them ghosts are coming. He's gonna have some black RB lady going, <laughs> Oh, them ghosts are coming. And everybody gonna be dancing, and we're gonna forget all about we were supposed to be scared of the damn ghost. You know, we're gonna be rocking with Will again. You know, like oh, he got that type of personality, like it's yeah, I the just closest. Can't. 
I would say the closest um, you would get to a Will Smith horror movie is I Am Legend. Yeah, I was going to say, I can That's see it. them doing zombie movies. Like, that fits, because you can <clears throat> serious, but still have, like, that humor, and it fits the tone of a zombie movie. But I feel like when you go yeah, into, he's like, the only horror, horror, horror movie. Movie, it's, he's, it's he, like, he always gets those, gotta, those... He either gets those comedy roles or those um, I am a progressive alpha male roles, if you get what I mean. Mm. Not, not stereotypical, but progressive alpha male. Like, I'm, I'm the cool guy that always saves the day, but I crack jokes. You know what I'm saying? Independence Day. Bad boys. I think you know what I'm saying? Lateral damage. I fuck with that joke. I need to watch that again. Collateral damage? Come on with Jamie Foxx and yeah. Tom. I don't know damn Rwanda. No, not that. Rwanda? Yeah, not that one. I don't know that one. Nah, the damn one. What's the movie with um, Will Smith and the, um, the people Enemy he worked with? The, nah, the people he worked with pretend to, pretend to be like figments of his imagination to try to make him seem like he's crazy so they can get him out of the company because he's still um, traumatized over the death of his child. The name of that movie, man. Uh, what? Hold on, say that. I don't know. He's uh, the, he working for a company. They trying to get him out of the company, but they acting like they're like they basically gaslighting him to think that they're not really real, so they can have yeah. lateral beauty. There you go. Lateral beauty. I've never even heard of there that. You go. Collateral view. With a successful so New That's York advertising executive suffers a great tragedy, he retreats from life. While he his concerned friends try to desperately re, to reconnect with him, he seeks answers from the universe by writing letters to love, time, and death. When his notes bring unexpected personal responses, he begins to understand how these constants interlock in a life fully lived and how even the deepest loss can reveal moments of meaning and beauty. And this is from I, what is that joke called? I am DB. I am DB. Oh, I got, yeah. It should be a good movie, man. Like, you know, the three concepts, he writes letters to his coworkers and friends, um, hire three people, three actors, to pretend like they are those three concepts. Mm. It's a, and when talking to them, like they videotape him talking to them, but in the videotapes, they take those actors out of the videotapes so it looks like he's talking to himself in public. You feel me? Like freaking out, talking to them, but he's really talking to somebody. That's an interesting ass premise, man. I, I want to I, I wanna check it out yeah. now. Yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah. It's, a, it's, one of his, it's one of his best. And to be made in his later years, as far as the act, it's one of his better movies. I, yeah, it does look like know. a rather new movie. Yeah, that came out 2016. Yeah. Like, it's one of his better movies to me. Like with the cast and everything, the how they put everything together, the movie is just a all around better project, one of his best projects to me. Okay. Yeah. I'm down with it. I, I you put me up on another one. Might have to do a face to screen on that one and check it out. And have a talk. Yeah, that, that concept, yeah, many... that concept is re- original as shit, though. Like the the gaslighting piece of like, that, like I've never heard of that particular. Would the, the one thing that that really tripped me out is that he's writing letters to love, time, and death. That's some crazy shit. Mm-hmm. Well, that is that, that's that sounds like that sounds like some trippy shit. I would get into. But, okay. I'm so like we got a little, we got a, a face the screen segment just made out the random, out the blue in the good and fuckery. Episode 61, good and fuckery. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I know that was random. <laughs> but yeah, that's my random segue to the next topic. And that next topic is, you know what? Um, a couple of weeks back, uh, Jim Jones and Freddie Gibbs got into it at this uh, restaurant. Uh, Looks like uh, Jim Jones was leaving. Freddie Gibbs was going in, and uh, they got a little, a little scuff or whatnot. To the sources say Jim Jones had the one up on uh, Mr. Gibbs, but that next day uh, Gibbs was showing on uh, on Instagram saying he was fine, and um, I just like how they handled it. 
I handled it. You know, it's times where you Jones just have very it. mums on it. Like he ain't said much of nothing. You know, knowledge, and he, he like I don't know what y'all are talking about. I wish that man you know, success. Like the best that smart. exactly. I feel like that's how men should handle their scuffles, even if the scuffle is just off of some stupid rap stuff. No video. Yeah, nothing happened. We know nothing what happened, happened, but the world. That's it. Nothing happened. That's it. And we, now we have an understanding, we, and we move on. We fought. We squashed it. Went, good old on. fashioned fisticuffs. That's it. No one died. No one got shot. Everybody's Maybe. still out making money, providing for their family, living good life. Some people may have got trolled, but that's it. Yeah. And that's the way it should be, man. Just you know, just one two it out. Some um, people have learned that valuable lesson that punks run up to get beat down, but you know. Exactly. The, um, another sad thing. Um, since we brought up Freddie Gibbs and everything, whatnot, and uh, whatnot, gonna that was that was a weak disc, man. You make good music, man, but that was a weak disc. All he said was, and I don't vote with Freddie Gibbs. Something about ribs. I don't know. It was just weak. That was weak. Ooh. Don't gonna. Like, gonna like why I say oh gonna gonna why is he be you in him? I don't there know. There people. I ain't even know they had it. It's just random. I just know. I just know. Um, I think Freddie said a subliminal because something happened between between them two or whatever. But he didn't say his name. But randomly, yeah, randomly. Gunna out of the blue just tweeted when my album dropped that it's going to be the biggest day of his career. So everybody is just like hyped up to hear the diss, like because we think it, you know, it's a diss. So right, I was like, all right, let me go ahead and listen to this diss or whatever. Didn't know exactly what song I came along. I'm just listening to the music, and next thing you know, and next thing you know, all I heard was I don't fuck with Freddie Gibbs, and then he moves along with the rest of the subject. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what? Wait a minute, that's you did, it? You did all that just to say I don't like this dude? That's it? Really? Yeah, that's clout chasing, one-on-one. That is clout chasing right there. And we ever wanted to know what it looked like. That's clout chasing. Because you don't, you don't do all that and then come out with no bullshit like that. Come on, bro. Yeah, and then you, now you just, just want people to click the... on your album to hear that bullshit and yeah. then hopefully get you this I'm trying to ride the Freddie Gibbs wave. And he said that. That's pretty much what Freddie Gibbs said. In you algorithm tied in you algorithm tied in the words of Kwame Brown. You algorithm tied. And the people know about it because they've been like joking about this, that weak ass this for the longest time, man. If you're going to, if you going to freaking promote a disc, advertise a disc, that shit better be awesome. That shit better be worth me listening to, like for real. He Anybody was probably that younger generation, life. though, bro. So you know they not they're not as they didn't come now, up. Even like, the, you know, a lot of the older hip hop artists, they had to come up like uh-huh. battling against each other and having kind of like rhymes on deck for people. Like they don't really come up in there. So a lot of that shit, if they're not at the point of like I'm going to like physically try to shoot you and shit, like the Chicago dudes be on, like. They don't really know how to really beef with each other. You know what I mean? Like they know how to talk shit on online, but they're not really steep on how to like put that shit into the song to make the song cool. So they don't have that skill set. So that's why that shit so be a- awkward as fuck. Like now if they talking about killing a nigga, they they can make that shit go. In Chicago, mm-hmm. they they special. But uh I don't know that Gunner came up enough with like enough like beefing and shit. Like he's more, I'm gonna make a good song. Like I'm gonna make some shit that rock in the club. People gonna like singing along to it and shit, but not necessarily. I'm about, I ain't even never heard a lot of rah rah shit in his lyrics before. He more stunning and, you know, drip too hard and type shit. You feel me? All, all I got to say, uh, well, I, even that some of his fans would even say, yo, that was kind of weak, bro. That was kind of weak. But all I got to say, if that's all the music that you make, just don't diss. Don't don't diss nobody. Because that's not you. There's a reason why Baby kept telling Lil Wayne, even though he was fully skilled in enough to diss somebody. There's right. a reason why he said, they just want you to just make these clubs on home. Continue making that. That works with your brand. But as far as you saying something about a diss, shut the fuck up. Don't do it. It's just trash. <laughs> like, 
Just stop. Just keep making your club song. That's it. That is it. No, I'm with them. Yeah. Uh, stick to what you know. What up? Be you. Speak, also speaking to this is um Pete. Yeah. Yeah. That shit ain't working. That shit ain't working for you, bro. Shit is not working. Um, I'm gonna skip around a bit since we just I heard about nothing this. that you said. This it was is, like uh, I'm gonna that shit ain't working. That shit ain't working. Oh, oh my bad. Can you hear me? I hear you now clearly. Yeah. Oh, I said look, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip around a bit since we're talking about disses, but yes. Um have y'all heard that Kanye West in the game um song Easy? Uh it's it's actually pretty good. I like how they sample um Easy E sample or whatever. And it was like I, I once was a thug all around the way. And then game comes in. My life was never easy. Easy. My life was never easy. The, you know, the beat go hard and everything. That's they a hard I like, I like that. Now, mind you. Yeah. Now, mind you, you know how I feel about the game. But the man makes some music. That's the same way I feel with Kanye. Sometimes Kanye be doing some flaw shit, but man, he makes some good music. But Pete Davidson said, <laughs> Pete Davidson said he is he is um, included in the weakest diss in rap. Because basically in the song, Kanye was like, I'm going to whip Pete Davidson's ass or whatever. He said, I survived that car crash so here. I could just beat Pete Davidson's ass. Woman's ass now. Singing along the Trey song, talking about, I'm Mr. Steal Your Girl. I don't know. I think I think Kanye yeah, is trying to practice because he was, them. you know, he got them charges for like beating up on a fan, right? So I think he was trying to practice, or he relapsed or something when he saw a fan because he he <laughs> knocked the fan out. Now Bill, he got... get these swings off. See how these noodle arms actually hit. <laughs> Make sure I get my defense right. I need some practice. <laughs> I need some. Need, need, need unorthodox fight style. I'm about to face. I don't know how but, to defend against a donkey. Yeah, if you listen. I like a fight club idea. Celebrity death, man. Thriller like fight club. Sign the fight sign them up, man. Thriller fight club. If y'all out there listening, sign up Pete Davidson versus Kanye West. I guarantee pay per view sales of being a million, man. I'm with it. I'll they said uh, Pete, Pete Davidson up. Like you said, Pete Davidson upped his security not because he's scared of Kanye, but he's scared of his Kanye's fans because Kanye's fans are crazy. And I kind of believe him on that, man. I really, I feel like Kanye fans is almost like them old school Wu Tang fans. Like you crazy, know, you couldn't so back in the day, you couldn't really say nothing about Wu Tang mm -hmm. and some random person like Joe Button got punched one day by a random Wu Tang fan <laughs> before. So shoot, I, yeah, I, think, yeah, that was, no, I no. think that was just a feel. Mm -hmm. So, I think his fans are crazy enough to. Yeah, what you say, I think they are too. I think they are too. Mm -hmm. Kanye West fans, mm -hmm. yeah, his true like the fanatic fans, not just like a regular fan. Cause I'm a Kanye West fan. I, mean, I fuck with Kanye West. I love you. Some like, I ain't with all his music because he was that scoop, did boop, scoop, boop, boop, that shit. But I ain't, ain't fuck like that him. album. I ain't fuck with that album, but from his very first album to now, I fuck with Kanye. You feel me? Like it, I see the growth, I see the weirdness, I see how his personal shit has affected his music. But as as him being an artist, it's supposed to because you draw your music and your art from your personal experiences. So the crazier the shit he goes through, the crazier the music he'll make. So I just appreciate the artist in him. I fuck with Kanye West music as far as, as far as his political views and all the other shit to each his own. I, hey, to each his own. And, and some as him for some him fanatics saying, slavery was a choice. Fuck, fuck all that slavery was a choice shit because that 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 was some stupid ass shit for him to say. Um, but as far as a musical artist, I fuck with him. As far as uh. Mm -hmm. Um, his his taste and the apparel he's created, as far as the Yeezy brand with the shoes and the clothes, I, that that's just ain't my cup of tea. But maybe I'm too old school. Um, 
if you look at the the clothes I design, it's more of a, a, a simplistic. So I do have things more simplistic for the everyday person. Here, my anybody mm-hmm. can put my shit on a rock at any part of the day. So I mean, that's is our trade. You feel me? Like it, it's made for anybody, any part of the day. You can wake up, put it on, go sleep, put it on. You want to wear it to the club? Go. You wear it to the club. You just want to wear it to family. You wear it to family. Anywhere you want to go with it. any art trade, you can. Cause it's simple. You feel me? Like simple style for the stylist first. But Kanye West style is just like more. Uh, out of this world. I know his style. So, I know his style is uh, uh, style of women is kind of questionable at times, or whatever. But this new one is real plain. <laughs> Real plain as shit. I, I have no idea who she is. Man, but you know. He exactly. Can, he messing with her for the status of it, man, just so he can say he mm-hmm. got somebody that people know after him. You seen that? Oh, really, you, yeah. You seen that, that weird <laughs> party video with him, Madonna? Oh, that looked like the driest party ever, yo. They look like that. was the weirdest like, thing. Yo. Antonio, was it Antonio Brown was there? Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather looked like the truth. He looked like he was actually showing the truth. Like he looked like he like, what are we doing? What are we doing here? <laughs> like, That's wow. why he had his hood on. Like they I would never want like to go to a party like that. Like mm-hmm. let's all go sit on the couch and talk. While one lady kind of rocks to the beat and Madonna hugs on some random girl. Uh, and ne- neither one of them on beat. I ain't even hear the music, and I can tell they won't on beat. Yeah. The <laughs> weirdest part <laughs> for me was the collection of people. Like, like, how did y'all y'all get to hanging together? Like, Kanye. maybe Madonna and Kanye, but like, how did Antonio Brown get there? Like, why is Floyd? Kanye. There? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Kanye. 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 The power. Yo, yeah. Y'all. Cause you know they would not be hanging together if it weren't for him. They do not kick it on a normal basis together. Kanye has a dartboard of random celebrities, and he just throw darts at those at that dartboard and say, "Let's do a video." Remember that crazy video he had where um, it was him, Kim, Bill Cosby, Trump, Hillary, all in the same bed, ass naked. <laughs> I don't, I know that wasn't really them, but that was that video. He, he's always putting together the randomest people and putting them together in a in some yeah. type of random video. And I and and what I know my Madonna's an icon. I know Madonna's an icon, but uh, her um what is she doing, man? <laughs> like she has to make music. Mm-hmm. She just she just looked like a predator every time I see her, man. Like she just looked like she's just right. preying on any young male that's or female that's under her or some shit. Like, would you fuck she, it, Huh? Would you fuck? How much I'm getting paid? How much I'm getting paid? How much? No. <laughs> how much I'm getting out of this? Just, I don't know, man. Just the status, oh. just the status of, <laughs> of being known as being have fuck Madonna and being in the newspaper, being seen with her. The only reason that. why I, I was, uh, I don't know, man. It's just, she just don't seem like that's the most appealing coon of the night mm-hmm. at this point. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, <laughs> at, maybe if we got a time mm-hmm. machine the and, most and, appealing and, coon uh, if yes, we, man. maybe if we got a time machine and got Madonna from the 80s to come to fully grown Padawan of now, maybe. But Mm-mm. Madonna got Ooh, that bad breath, man. I'll never forget that video when she kissed Drake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that nigga, like, he was about to earl all in his mouth. Uh, he said, she was probably drinking all night, and it all smelled like every drink and drug she was with and on that night, man. She you know, like all the uh, and bad decisions she's ever been around. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I got, Maybe I got another one for you. Maybe their clone little mm-hmm. little guy, uh, Lady Gaga. I was about to call it Little Gaga. <laughs> little Gaga. Lady Gaga. <laughs> All right, Pat. Would you have sex with any woman knowing their last sexual partner with Dennis Rodman? Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. If that was the last, no. Maybe if it was like a 
a couple of months or years down the line or whatever, maybe, but no, like, like, was this like a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago? I was not even a month. Like, I want to. Are we out of months. the incubation period, basically? Yeah. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, transmissible. Yeah, like, <laughs> nah. Has the medicine kicked in? Nah. Man. Oh, <laughs> no. No. Because you know he gonna give her, he, you know he about to get that woman some critters. Mm-hmm. 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 I had to go into uh I would have to go in with the condom full of hot sauce, messing with one of them Dennis Rob, like Drake. That shit on the outside burn everything outside of me. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. sure I'm we trying to no, 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 let me put this on here, girl. Let me cleanse these walls, because, uh, you know, I know who was here last. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if they, I don't know if they took care of the place, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to devil I'm gonna have to put some put some hot sauce on that boy you that taco. Hey, you're gonna have to save that the combo. <laughs> Get them people much. Speaking, away from that coat, new. Speaking of um condiments, evil and uh combo meals and stuff, um y'all heard about this um Rest in peace, man. But this Wendy's worker got shot in the head by a drive through customer demanding extra barbecue sauce. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, that's mambo sauce. I think I think it was more. I think it's more to it than that. I think it was an attitude behind the person in Wendy's when somebody asked for it. And then the person was probably like, he probably like that 25 cent. Dude was probably like, damn, man, 25 cent. And he probably responded, yeah. I said 25 cents and this that that poor customer service that I always talk about. This truck a nerve. And then he just didn't think it was like, wow, I guarantee you won't be rude next time. But now you 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 going to jail over some damn sauce. You feel me? Bad you get cordial, and cordial is free, but it saves lives. You never know who having a bad day and you that last person that they can't take. Yeah, like, the damn it, you feel me? It, it won't just I can have an extra sauce. Um, sir, it's 25 extra cent, and then you got shot. No, it was some shit in between that. It was some bad customer service in between that. And I, and I know it because I deal with bad customer service. <laughs> and I often talk about it being on the podcast. I'm not complaining about it several times. I have an experience now recently because I, I admit I, I'm, I'm not going nowhere to have an experience. <laughs> sir, my dad. I don't know what I'm making. You feel me? Like I, I don't, I don't know what I may do with bad customer service. So I think it's best for me and the world. We just serve myself. Pause. But um, I can understand to a certain, a certain extent the anger the man probably felt. But as far as taking somebody's life over a sauce, it won't that deep, man. Hey, sis, if you send them mm-hmm. off for dinner, make sure you make them keep the pistol at home. Don't let them go out there with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't go nowhere. <laughs> crazy. And it's in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona is just crazy right now anyway. Well, Arizona is just crazy in general. Got the wild west. Always the wild, wild west. Got fucked up internet. It's hot. It's crazy out there. It's a lot of races. The internet is so fucked up. I, I know this because of my job. But yeah, it's it's yeah, terrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm going to just say this. I don't really care too much about it because fuck this dude. But um, what is this dude name? Martin Screlly, the guy that was like charging like oh, oh, crazy AIDS. amounts for the A's. Yeah, he's barred from the drug industry as he should be. Word. What did he do? And he's what why no, he, he was over? he first he was overcharging like the AIDS pill. Like he like it was like um AIDS medication or whatever. And he basically bought the company or whatever, and then he overcharged for that pill. Yeah, we'll wipe it over he was still he's still been around for the past couple of years since that first happened. What did he do? Um, let's see. And he was he was ordered to return sixty four point six million in profits. 
he and his former company reaped from jacking up the price and monopolizing the market for a life-saving drug. That's so that what it is. Got him for the right thing, not because he fucked those, but he they actually just did the right thing. What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A federal judge ruled Friday. How about 2022? Oh, you know what I'm, I'm talking also about. Barring. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Barring, provocative, and prison XCO from the pharmaceutical industry for the rest of his life. Uh, let's see. He's also the guy that screwed over the uh, the Wu Tang clan. So fuck him too. Whatever. He, on the million dollar. You know, album. Yeah, the million dollar album, whatever. Now, now the feds, the feds own that. Got the album. They're in possession of the album now, and they actually showed like the inside of it. Or, or whatever, but <laughs> because he owned it. Matter of fact, um, he said, "Where is it?" Because he actually owned it. But when they actually um, prosecuted him, you know, they took everything that he owned, exactly. including that album. So, so is that on the market now? Uh, right now, the the I think like one of the the libraries of Congress and the feds kind of own it right now yeah. or whatever. So nobody really owns it right now like, from what I've seen. It. Come on, Jay-Z. But, yep. And, 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 and take it home. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yep, that's a uh, pretty much I got. For good fucker. Did you say you had something yourself uh, there, Tiz? In my game. I was going to go ahead and skip it, but yeah, come on. Um, I was kind of wanting to see if y'all has seen what his pastor in Tulsa rub spit all over the dude's face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I saw his response, and that's how I found out about it. He, was, he apologized. For... Oh, he's apologized? Okay. He's apologized. He said, he said, yeah, that was a little bit too extreme and disgusting or whatever, but Nigga, no. What? What the hell? You this? You were not holy, nigga. Like, how are you rubbing? What are you doing? Like, it's COVID. What are you doing? You in the middle of a mega church or something, right? You done went up to a uh, altar call. Pastor, them come over. You know they about to lay hands on you, whatever. And pastor, <laughs> put a water spit in his hand and go to rub your face. Um, I'm about to lay hands on the pastor. They're gonna take me. Pause. They're gonna ban me from the church. What? Gonna not only that, you're risking my life and health. I don't know what you. I don't know you positive for anything. COVID, AIDS, anything. I'm going straight to hell. Cause on God, I'm I'm tearing that church the fuck up. What? Oh, Pastor the Bishop and the Deacon got to get their ass whooped today. Uh-uh. Ain't nothing in the Bible. Uh, you yo, yeah. Speaking my face. Uh, mm. yo, it, no. Spitting on someone is considered like the highest form of disrespect. Bro, I done been through a lot of shit in my life. I ain't never had nobody spit on me. Like, like, come on, bro. Like, what? Not you. Not just spit on somebody and rub it. In. You, you literally what? bathed their face in your saliva or whatever. You mm. bathe their face in disrespect. <laughs> bathe <laughs> your face the... in Timberland boot. And I had my and, at me. And then, and then the most fucked up part of it, they supposed to just sit there and take it like it's not really disrespect. Oh, they they supposed yeah. to take it as a blessing. You know how much of no, a, the audacity of your arrogant ass ego to think that your saliva is so oh. blessed that you oh, can go ahead and, hand and near me and disrespect oh, somebody's face? Like what? I'm gonna grab that nigga by his wrist and be like, "If you put that shit on me, I'm gonna fuck you up right here." Better watch. I'm gonna start quoting. Down. I'm gonna beat your ass all the way quoting. down the aisle. And the doors of the church are open, and then I'm gonna throw you out of there. Yeah. I'm gonna start quoting uh, Samuel L. Jackson in Pulp Fiction, and and I <laughs> I'm gonna start quoting uh, Samuel in Pulp Fiction. Like, and I'll be, play my, be with great vengeance 
And furious anger. Damn right, furious anger. Those who attempt to poison and destroy my brethren. And you will know my name is Lord when I lay my vision. <laughs> <laughs> and the hands of God came down upon thy face. No, don't fuck with feet. Don't put them on me. No, I, I, mm-mm. Instant, instant triggers. Don't spit on me. Spit, yo. Don't wipe I, with me. Man, me. yo, I can don't take a lot of shit. Don't spit on yourself and wipe on me. Don't spit mm-hmm. in your hands. I shake my hands. Don't put your feet on me. No, instant mm-hmm. triggers. No Dude, bodily triggers. fluids. Nothing Ooh. from you should no touch bi- me without my permission. No bodily no. fluids on me. I am not a thought. Uh, no bodily fluids. I don't not care what false. the fluid is. Don't don't throw no water on me either. Like for me, like don't do nothing to me where it's coming from you mm-hmm. unless you got my permission. Respect my personal space. Mm-hmm. I don't even like. I don't even like when they come up and like you know you will be a visitor or something. They want to try to hug you. Like I don't know you like that. Like. Mm-hmm. Give me the option. Yeah. Invite you in for the hug, but I get you know I give you the bump, mm-hmm. the bump. You know, Obama let me, let me right on. But let yeah, me see your vax card that. first before I give you a hug. I'm weird about my personal space like that. Like you know, I, with people I fuck with, I'm force field, with, but, randoms, man, force field. Back the fuck up, force field. Much less a spithead. Oh my god, I'm gonna beat the sh- oh, I'm beating shit down past the leg right there. Indeed. Some people ain't gonna agree. That was my fuckery for the day. Some people ain't gonna agree, but hey, y'all just be the people who spit on y'all damn face while I got blood on my fucking face. Nah, they be trying to pull that that shit off and spit on my face. That dude sound like one of them crazy Nigerian pastors or whatever that be trying to do all kinds of crazy stuff in Africa and say God led him to do it. I don't care where he's from. You come at me with a spit hand, I'll beat your ass back across the middle passage, goddammit. We ain't doing that, champ. I mean no harm, no disrespect, but you come at me with a spit hand, it is all, bets are all, gloves are all, I am going to war. You have lost your fucking mind. And I'm going to beat you, take you like you a your red sea. Out don't you worry. Yeah, fuck that. Mm-mm-mm. But yeah, that was my fuckery uh, that I wanted to add. I just kind of wanted to get y'all take on to see if y'all have seen it. <laughs> that was the good. That was the good and fuckery. We ended it off with beating up pastors. Yeah. Pastor, yeah. we gonna whoop your ass if you come at us with the spit hand. Or keep your hands black feet and fluid to your motherfucking head. No blasphemy, but Man, that shit was blasphemy. I'm gonna be blasphemy tonight, but I know you can get your ass blasted from me if you fucking come at me with a spit hand. With all disrespect. <laughs> and uh, you know, as long as you don't come at me with a spit hand, I, I think I can work with you and you will, we can do business. You know, give me that good customer service like Faith was talking about. Um, do we have any black businesses or anything we want to promote tonight? Oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm gonna throw it up again for my boy Turtle with Turtle Kicks. Uh, with hey, who's at the line? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Y'all can find them on, uh, what is it, Facebook under Turtle Kicks. That's T-U-R-T-L-E-K-I-C-K-Z. Turtle Kicks. Y'all go on Facebook, push hashtag Turtle Kicks. This information should come up. Um, you got <laughs> shoes messed up? Holler at them. Sneakers messed up? Holler at them. Um, got shoes you love, you don't want to get rid of, got some stains on them, please leave, holler at him. He got the skills to pay the bills, man. Turtle kicks, shoe restoration services, holler at him. Indeed, man. Indeed. And um, after you're done getting your kicks restored, you're going to want to get your drip together to make sure you got something to go with those kicks. Face, let them know about how they get all of the partners merch as well as. Well, the newest of the AC83 line. Well, you can always go to once again and always rtreclothing.com. That's A R T R E clothing.com. rtreclothing.com. One more time. rtreclothing.com. Clothing. You know, it's a, all partners merchandise exclusively only available <laughs> at 
AllTradeClothing.com. Get your new AC83 merchandise. Springtime coming up, even though it looks like it's far away with all these winter storms we're going through on the East Coast. But hey, springtime is right around the corner. We got new short sleeve merchandise coming up. We always got hoodies available, as you see, past flaws in the AC83 merch. Um, it's my favorite hoodie. Look out for new stuff, man. Look out for new stuff, man. AC83, our trade clothing. Promo code? Any? Yeah, we'll give you one. Pod Squad 83. Pod Squad 83. All caps now. Pod Squad, the number eight and the number three. Save you a little bit of money. Oh, okay. man. Indeed. Um, and yeah, and if you spent your money there, you got your good merch, and you know you want to continue to support after that. Um, if you believe in what we're doing, if something resonated with you from the conversations that we have weekly, or if you just you know want to look out for your boys and help us to continue to pursue our dream and our passion. Feel free to support financially. You can do that in several different ways. You can go to Cash App, dollar sign, Podna Tiz One. That's dollar sign P O D N A T I Z number one. Just the number one. Um, oh yeah. Uh, you can support there by just donating. You can also donate at buymeacoffee.com for as little as one dollar. Um, up to however high you want to go. Um, you can also become a member on buymeacoffee.com which um, gives you access to exclusive member perks, um, special promo codes on merch, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or you can also become a monthly supporter um, and continue to donate um, if you want to go on anchor.fm backslash, no, anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partner. Anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partner. Um, and yeah, and if you listener, if you are a listener, not a person who watches the video, but you prefer to listen while you're riding to work, et cetera, um, make sure you're listening on Anchor.fm as well because we're monetized there. So every time you click on our video, we get, uh, you know, a small portion of that ad revenue, and it definitely helps the podcast in the long run. So continue to help us out that way. Um, and if you just want to talk to us, you want to get in touch with us, you want to kind of shoot the shit with us, pick our brains on stuff, give us new topics, give us your perspective on topics outside of the actual podcast. Pat, how can they get in touch with us out here, man? You, you get an at sign, and then beside the at sign, you put T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's at sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. And uh, you can find us on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, or even also on Facebook. Tiz, Face, Pat, all the partners. You may see us, me and Face, um, tagging each other with Tiz, random subjects and stuff on Facebook or whatever, putting all our random vids out there. But uh, yeah, hit us up there. Uh, if you have any suggestions for our live show to react to, you can hit us up there at T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. Indeed, indeed. And um, yeah, man, last but not least, if you can't remember nothing we've said tonight, um, as far as any of the ways that you can interact with us and engage with us, always just go to thepartners.com and click one of the links there. There's a link to our trade, um, our trade clothing.com. If you want to merge, you can get any of our social media links from there. You can get our YouTube page. Um, if you want to see our um, actual visual content and video content, you can even click links there that'll take you to our live streams that we do weekly. So Go ahead and holler us there. Um, and yeah, man, just keep supporting. The easiest thing you can do, though, if you can't do nothing else, like the video, like the podcast, share it with friends who are, you know, you think it'll resonate with them as well. Um, make sure that you're coming and actually being and becoming a part of the conversation. Those engagements really mean a lot to us. And it kind of, you know, gives us different perspectives, um, allows us to see outside of ourselves and keep the conversation going in our community and just kind of get those dialogues building. So, Please, please, please interact with the content in any way you see fit. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you're down with the pod, Scott, by subscribing on all platforms. And other than that, man, we love y'all. It's been another week, episode 61. Another good one in the books, big baby. And as always, man, I have been one third of the partners. I've been Tiz, and I've been along with. Uh, he's been along with some random guy that's been talking shit the whole pod with dreads. His name is Padawan, and I'm along with always smoking. You know what? Uh, always the best. Face. Peace out. We about this thing.
We about to start. See y'all next week, motherfucker. I'm about to see this.